in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on fifty centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you your way thank you for watching be blessed I dashed down home to see um, my father two days ago and when I went there I made sure that I packaged something and blessed him blessed my mother is been the culture hallelujah if you practice it it has a reward honor your father and your mother what's the reward that your days may be long please let me tell you something don't think that the bible is just joking when you see these keys these are very powerful irrefutable keys in the kingdom that means dishonor your father and your mother so that what will happen to your days as simple as that. Period. As simple as that. Dishonor your father and your mother. And then you shorten your days. But when you honor your father and your mother, it's tied to longevity. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. I was to talk on um, just one, one more and then we'll look at the natural laws. There is the principle of seed faith. I need to teach on the principle of seed faith, but I'm thinking of leaving it. Um, we'll use it to wrap up today's teaching. Right, so let's continue. Vows and sacrifices. Spiritual laws of wealth and prosperity. Vows and sacrifices. Psalm 50 verse 5. Psalm 50 verse 5. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 50 verse 5. Everybody read. It's projected. One to read. Those that have made a covenant with me. How? by sacrifice vows and sacrifices are powerful powerful kingdom keys of activating the spiritual laws of giving what is a vow a vow is a commitment in the house of God that's just a simple word for it a commitment you commit yourself under God that you are going to Give something for the house of God. It's still part of kingdom investments, just an extension of it. A vow. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to tell you the difference between a vow and a sacrifice. They are not the same. They are similar, but a vow, paying or remitting a vow may require sacrifice, but not every sacrifice is a vow. So, I'm going to explain that. A vow is a commitment. A commitment to invest your resources in the advancement of God's kingdom. Specific, um, a specific amount. It could be anything, not necessarily money. You can vow to God. There are people who pray and they tell God, uh, let me give you an example of a vow. Remember the story of Anna. Uh, hallelujah. Remember that story? Anna wanted a child. And she made a vow. It was a commitment. It was a pact. You can call it a covenant. And she said, Lord, give me a son and I will give you a priest. Are you getting my point? So a vow is a commitment between you and God that you are going to do certain things in the house of God or to a servant of God or contribute in specific ways to advance the kingdom of God and the house of God. Do vows exist today? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
a vow can be a corporate agreement a corporate agreement or just an individual desire or instruction from the holy spirit what do i mean by a corporate agreement we can all agree there are churches there are ministries that all agree maybe all the workers make this commitment um one way to look at it is like um i don't want to use that word dues you know what dues are okay look at dues from a spiritual perspective that's a vow right yeah so it's, it's a bond upon yourself you're going to say lord this is what i am going to do in your house and the bible says every time you make that commitment something happens between you and god now um i don't want to talk much it's very clear very straight to the point but it is very important that when you make a vow you are not coerced this is this is really the central point because i know that there are many people there are ministries for instance that say um we need 20 or 50 people to make a pledge of one one million naira and some people just get very emotional because the message was so hot and then they come out and everything in the kingdom is by faith but it is important to make sure that you come out and make commitments that are realistic and redeemable are you getting my point now there are churches that chase people up and down saying what of the vow you said you were going to give us the car the man said i changed my mind though you know i know that um there are many in in almost i think most ministries some at the end of the year at the beginning of the year at some point in the ministry they challenge the people to make very strong prophetic commitments whether with their resources with their homes you know all of that all of that is called a vow the danger of not fulfilling a vow is that you can bring judgment on yourself is that serious is that very serious there are lots of people that see the pastor and say pastor they just got emotional they say in one week time a vibut is coming i'm giving it to you and then eventually it doesn't come i remember there was a case like that years ago uh and and if you're a man of god here be very careful don't coerce people into making foolish vows one man of god forced a phone very beautiful phone out of a lady's hands a uh, a boyfriend also bought the phone for her it was not even up to one week the man of god just saw the phone and he liked it and um when she told the boyfriend she said well when I say boyfriend, I don't mean you understand what I'm saying, right? Maybe let me use a very nice word. Please, what should I use? The answer, okay. That word, boyfriend, sounds like a joker, right? So let's use a name that gives the guy a very serious. Now, when she told him, the guy now, when she told him that she gave the phone, he said, he will come and arrest the pastor if he doesn't give the lady back the phone. You know, and all kinds of things happen. And um, eventually, the pastor said the lady should bring the seed equivalent of the phone. You know, look, save yourself unnecessary embarrassment. Teach people the right thing and give them an opportunity to respond. Hallelujah. Never put pressure on people. Yes, it's true that ministries need financial resources. That's why we're teaching what we're teaching. Because a blessed congregation, a blessed people will produce a blessed assembly. Is that true? Hallelujah. So be careful when you make vows. Don't be emotional about it. But that does not mean you should not apply the law of faith. Hallelujah. There are times you can make commitments and challenge yourself. And... Um, redeem your vow sacrifices similar to vows but um it's just your commitment in the house of god really every kind of giving is this kind of giving this sacrifice i'm talking about is the one that will cost you something very serious this is not just your normal giving um first kings verse three 
First Kings 3, verse 3. Let's see something that Solomon did. I want to show you an example of a sacrifice. This is a commitment that challenges your faith. I'll talk more on it when I teach on the law of seed faith or the principle of seed faith. A kingdom sacrifice is not just um, your giving. In sacrifice, convenience is out of the way. That's why most sacrifices, um, biblically now, right? A sacrifice is usually a product of either an instruction from the Holy Spirit or a deep revelation from the word. Hallelujah. Something must compel you to do something unusual. I'll talk more about that. And Solomon loved the Lord. So that was the revelation behind his giving. Are you getting my point now? He didn't just give because he was a king. Walking in the statutes of David, his father, only he sacrificed burnt offerings in high places. Verse Verse what now? All right, continue. Verse 4. Or oh, let's go to verse 5 very quickly. Did I say 5? 4. 4. So that we see what he did. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. For that was a great high place. How many offerings did he sacrifice? A thousand burnt offerings. Now imagine, just replace all the human beings here and just imagine they are animals. Right? Imagine the pool of blood that was flowing all around. That was a sacrifice. One thousand. One thousand. What a waste, right? That's an example of a sacrifice. The woman who came and broke her alabaster box at the feet of Jesus. The Bible says it was worth a whole year's wage costly nard. These were spices that were very, very um, they were what we call colognes in our day today. Very expensive cologne. And the Bible didn't say she just put a hole and poured small and left the rest. The Bible says she broke everything including the jar. Hallelujah. If it does not cost you something serious, it's not sacrifice. It can be giving, it can be this. Solomon said, I will not give God what will not cost me something. There are many of us we've never made a sacrifice for the kingdom in our life. And it's not just about giving. It's a culture. I'm not just talking of seeds. The sacrifice of your time. The sacrifice of your resources. Hallelujah. It says, gather my saints unto me. They that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. That means every time you do something that costs you in the house of God, it's like entering a covenant with God and God is committed to keeping his own part. Hallelujah. A sacrifice is no ordinary giving. It's giving plus. Giving that costs you something. Hallelujah. That's why it is born out of a revelation. The offering you give you give, most of us give out of our convenience. Hallelujah. But when you bring something that costs you, I mean something that you know that a part of you goes with it, that's a sacrifice. And you don't just do it because you are coerced. I told you that two things govern sacrifice. One, a deep revelation from God's word and the other, an instruction. I can be teaching like this and the Holy Spirit can give you an instruction. I remember a lady one time um, we always give people an opportunity to sow and give and all of that but I'm not the kind of man of God that will tell you sew your shoe, remove your weevon, drop it in the offering basket, remove your this and that. Um, we consider that not to be necessary but I remember one time one lady just dropped a very expensive phone and I was so touched. I said Lord I don't want trouble. And we looked for the lady and we told her, please, I want to pray for you and give you back your phone. And she said, no, the Lord instructed me. You see that? For many of you, when the whole thing would have gone down, you'd have said, truly, oh, thank you, sir. You're a very good man of God. Hallelujah. Vows exist. Sacrifices exist. And it is very, very powerful. Let's leave it there.
I'll talk about the law of seed faith. I want to, I don't want to talk about it now. If I'm to expand, I will have to enter the law of seed faith. But I want us to round up with it tonight. The natural laws of wealth and prosperity. Please listen carefully. We've discussed the spiritual laws. As you look at these things, I want you to see the areas where you have not been practicing it. Right? Both the spiritual laws, mindsets, paradigms that need to shift. And make sure you make quality adjustments. Natural laws of wealth and prosperity. Proverbs 18 verse 16. Proverbs 18 verse 16. Thank you, Jesus. I want to talk about the concept of money. Please write the concept of money. What is money? Really? We're talking about financial prosperity now. What is money? I'm tempted to ask the treasurer to bring some money for me. But, um, if you can't listen tonight, just endure it. You're not going to see any money. Some of you like money too much. Too much. Just seeing it, even if you don't touch it, just makes you happy. You don't know what to do with yourself. The concept of money. All right, all right, please, let's get to work. What is money? Money is not the paper you hold. Please, treasurer, help me. Let's just do it. Please give me money, treasurer. Treasurer, oh, anything for the boys? Proverbs 18, verse 16. Let's read. One, two, read. One more time. All right, replace a man with your name. Ready? One to read. Aha, I know how to get you people to participate. Ah! Some of you are calling all the names so that no part of the name will be missing. It. One more time. May that be your testimony. In the ah! Okay. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. This is the finance department. I have no business with. <laughs> Love not the world. <laughs> not the things that are in this world. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not. Hallelujah. People have died for this. Right? This thing is running away from others and is running towards others. Tonight, what you will learn will make it come your direction. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Right? The concept of money. Now, look at me. Do you know that 100, is it 100 million or 100 billion of Zimbabwe money just buys one egg? All of this in Zimbabwe, if it's a Zimbabwe currency, I don't know how far their inflation has gone, but it can buy just one egg or a cup of tea. So you can be a broke billionaire. Are you getting my point? I want to redefine your mindset. Let's understand we're looking at the natural laws because for many of us, this is what we believe to be money, right? This is what we have been taught to be money. Because when you walk, this is what they give you. Is that true? They give you this and then you can use this to buy this and that in the market. Now, but um, I want us to look back at a few hundred years ago when there was no paper. Hallelujah. What was their money? Huh? Come on, they are saying cowries. What do you mean cowries? Let me teach you. Keep quiet. Praise God. 
Now, please listen. If we do not understand the biblical concept of money, you will be misled. Are you getting my point? Please, please, you need to get this. I want everybody here to be rich and prosperous and no devil will stop you in Jesus' name. So listen carefully. Now, when the world was in what we call an agrarian age, agriculture predominantly, are you getting my point now? They used what we call the barter system. Have you heard about that? Or you were sleeping when they were teaching you in primary school? Trade by barter. Where I carry my goat. Right? And then you bring your bag of maize. And I give you a goat. And you give me. So will you call that bag of maize money? Or will you call that goat money? Are you getting my point? Let's trace it and see where we are coming from. So you bring a goat. And then I bring a bag of rice or something. And then we exchange. That was how um, people carried out all kinds of transactions. But eventually a few things happened. Because number one, it was not easily divisible. You see that? You don't need to write it. This is um, what's now economics. You know that. You have an idea. Some of you don't know. If you don't know, write. Don't just say I know. If you don't know, write it. Humble yourself and just say, I'm just hearing it for the first time. Right. Hallelujah. Number two was portability. If you had oil, for instance, will you carry one drum of oil on your head and be walking around looking for who has something? Number three, I may have something you want, but you may not have what I need in exchange for it. Are you getting my point? So all these factors began to create a need. Um, to find something that will fit the definition of what we know today to be money. From there, people went into cowries and gold. I'm just fast forwarding very quickly. Gold and silver and all of that. They tried to make um, coins, gold coins, shekels of silver. You see them in the Bible. So they sold Joseph. They gave Joseph and then they gave the people how many shekels? 30 shekels and all of that. Same thing Judas did for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, eventually, they brought the concept of what we call paper. The paper currency or paper notes. Um, please listen. Let me bless you right now. The original revelation behind, I want to carry a new one. The original revelation behind this was supposed to be a receipt for the money you have. Are you getting my point? What today you call money was originally devised so that it becomes a receipt. Come, Sam, let me explain that to you. Um, ah, I can't use a human being now. I turned and I saw a very pretty lady. I said, no way. I wanted to use her as a commodity back to sender. Give me this sticker. Can you remove it and just leave it to me? You must understand in Jesus' name. Right? Hold this. Now, imagine Sam walking around with this guitar. Are you getting my point now? He is going everywhere with it. Are you getting my point? Now, this, this, this is not portable. Are you getting my point now in uh, explanation now? And he cannot be carrying this to go around with it. So, we devised a way of measuring what the worth of this guitar is. Right? So, let's assume it's how much. Um, we give it a value based on a reference. And let's call it 4,000. So, I now say, Sam, drop this guitar. Drop the guitar now. I want to show you how flawed the economy of the world is. And hold this. This is 4,000. So this becomes an evidence that you have real guitar lying down somewhere. Are you getting me now? This paper that you're holding is a receipt for something real. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That means every time you hold this, it is a sign that there is something real that you have. More true and more real. Are you getting my point? But I don't apply for economics. Some of you are looking at me. If you've not applied for, for jam, 
Don't try it at all. Praise God. This is basic economics. Now, the world system had a universal backing called gold. Everybody say gold. Are you getting my point now? So gold was the reference, right? So every time they gave you 4,000, or how much is this? 5,000. What they are trying to say is that this is a receipt for having real gold worth 5,000. Are you getting my point? Now, gradually, the Illuminati and the rest and so on and so forth just divorced this from gold. So that you are now holding this, but it is not backing, it's not being backed up by anything. Let me give you a proof. Set fire on this now. How will you claim it back? Are you getting my point now? Set fire. Just, we won't do it. Ah, God will punish us. We won't do it. But set fire on this right now. Do you know if you set fire now, who will you take to court? Are you getting my point now? So, there can be one billion of this. And if fire catches it, it, has, it doesn't have any value. There is nothing that is backing it. Are you getting my point now? So, if your concept of prosperity is having this, then you are not rich. Some of you are saying, I don't agree. Let me shall have this one. I know some of you, you are saying all these things you are talking in story. so let me have this one first. This is what people want. Listen, I want to explain to you why someone was called a rich fool in the Bible. Do you know why they call him a rich fool? He was not called a fool because he was rich. I will tell you why. Praise the Lord. Bless you, Sam. So what then is money? Right, please. Money is simply a means or a way to exchange or reward value. Money is a reward for value. And then you can add or perceived value. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Money is simply a reward or what you get in exchange for value. And there's a reason why I said perceived value. If I'm a false prophet, for instance, let me show you what perceived value is. If I'm a false prophet and I come and I say, Annie, you are going to be blessed. Package 10,000. You have now rewarded me for honoring what you call perceived value. This is not real value. Are you getting my point now? I will show you why many men of God are rich. They don't even know why they are rich. They think they are just rich because they are tithing alone. No. No one gets rich for doing nothing. Only arm robbers. You see why arm robbery is bad? When, we ex when I explain to you the concept of value, you will see that if you are getting money for doing nothing, you are a thief. Praise God. Please write. Did I define money? What did I say it is? Okay, let's give the two definitions. Many of you have mixed all kinds of things. Let's just give it two definitions. Number one, money is a means of exchange of value. A means of exchange of value. Number two, money is is a reward for adding value. We're going to be dwelling around this one word that has changed the life of millions and may it change someone's life tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I think I did a little teaching on that when I was talking to the final year people. Write this word down, value. V-A-L-U-E. When medical students come into the medical school, oftentimes they take them to see a cadaver. I don't know if they still do it. And they ask them to salute the cadaver because their knowledge about medicine will be dependent on the sacrifice of that cadaver. Write this word down, value. Because the blessings that will come upon your life will be dependent on that one word. Please don't joke with it. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Have you written it? Value. Value simply means your ability to solve problems and provide solutions. Please listen to me. These are irrefutable keys. These are irrefutable keys. If you catch what I'm telling you, it's only a matter of time. What is value? The ability to solve problems and provide or prefer solutions. Value also means your worth. A sum total of your worth. We play around these two definitions. I'm so happy seeing everybody writing. This is a school. You must write. It's not just about shouting. This is a very serious school. So you write and learn, understand what it is. That's why I gave us the course curriculum before we started. Thank you, Jesus. So value talks about your ability to what? Solve problems. Are you getting me? Now, when dealing with the natural laws of prosperity, everything about our discussion will hinge on this word value. What it is that you can provide. What it is that you have that God has given you. Are you getting my point now? That you can give humanity and you can receive rewards for. These, these are irrefutable keys of prosperity. Many people in church teach on tithing and giving. We touched on that, right? But for many prosperity teachings, they just stop there. And say, so everybody rise up and package a seed. But the truth is that if that is all that is taught the body of Christ, that theology will only make pastors rich. Are you getting me now? Value. Everybody say value. What I can give that will be paid for. What I can offer that will bring rewards for me. Forget about total prosperity if you claim you do not have something to offer. Let me tell you something. Every time God wants to bless you, after practicing these kingdom laws, he will always place a demand on something you have. Everybody say, I have something. Say it, I have something. In 2 Kings 4, when they came and met the woman, remember the story of the woman, the wife of the prophet who died, and they were about taking the children. When she ran to the prophet and said, help me, what did he tell her? He said, what do you have? Great men are men who have something, they know what they have, and they've mastered the art of packaging their value. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? When Peter and John came to the man at Gate Beautiful, the Bible says they told him, look on us. And the man looking, expecting to receive something. That means he expected that they had something to give. Is that true? And they said, silver and gold we do not have. I think it was the workers or final yes, uh, people now or heads of department that I was teaching them that in this life there is what you have and there is what you do not have. Is that true? When you find what you have, you develop and deploy it. When you find what you do not have, you learn how to receive it. And there are two ways to receive. Number one is by what? Knowledge and impartation. These are the two ways of receiving things in the kingdom. Through knowledge and through impartation. Is someone following me, please? Hallelujah. Value. He said, silver and gold have I known. That means I acknowledge that there are some things I do not have. He said, but such as I have. You can only give such as you have. At what point in his life did he know that he had that? Are you following me now? Elisha told um, the king, he said, let Gehazi come to me. Let Gehazi come to me that he will know 
that there is what? A prophet in Israel. Hallelujah. Are you following me, please? Say value. Say it again, value. Now, let's read Proverbs 18, verse 16. Proverbs 18, verse 16. Just leave her quietly. I hope she's okay. Did she faint on? Oh, she's under the anointing. She fainted. Okay, carry her. Welfare department. What made her faint? She's sick. Mm, that's why we've been teaching. Please, people know what to do. Let's, let's concentrate. You pray for her and it doesn't work. Take her to the hospital. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Proverbs 18. Now, everywhere you see gift, replace it by the word value. Are you ready to read now? One to read. A man's value does what? A man's value. That means when you have something to offer, when you have the ability to solve problems and profess solutions, the Bible says it can make room. It didn't say it to show you where the room is. It can make room and do what? Bring you before great men. Natural laws of prosperity. You must understand that those who are blessed financially in this kingdom, listen to me, those who are blessed financially in this kingdom are men and women who have something to offer. Everybody say, I have something to offer. Now, when we talk of value, whether it is spiritual value, Whatever it is. Let me tell you why men of God are rich. And they do not even know. As I'm talking to you right now. I'm offering value to you. Is that true? I am solving a problem. I'm preferring solutions. I'm offering spiritual value. Now it is a law in the kingdom. Every time you add value. Whether you sell it or give it for free. You must be rewarded. That's how the law works. I've given somebody a big revelation. Every time value is released, whether you give it for free or you sell it, you are compelled to receive a reward. Whether you give it for free or you sell it, you're not paying me for what I'm giving, but I am conscious that there is a law. That's why I give my best. Are you getting my point now? Because according to God's law, according to the law that he has put, that is natural does not mean it does not come from God. It's consistent with kingdom principles. Are you getting my point now? Every single time you add value, reward comes to you. Question. That means the reason why you have not been rewarded is because you have not recognized or develop your value enough for somebody to pay for it. Is that true? Hallelujah. Are you understanding the concept of value? The ability to solve problems. Many people want something for nothing. Nigerians like something for nothing. We want dash. We want a wolf. We want all kinds of free things. But let me tell you something. In the school of prosperity, there must be something that you can give in exchange for money. Hallelujah. So the question I have for everyone listening to me is what do you have in your house? It could be a gift. It could be an anointing. It could be a skill from your training or it could be a talent. There are four things that connote value. Either what you are anointed, you are gifted, you are skilled, or you are trained for. Do you know that there is an anointing upon your life that you can add value to the world? This is why it is not right for believers to remain poor. If you understand the concept of value, you have something that a rich man needs. Are you getting my point now? You have something that a poor man needs. Because of that value you have, 
when it is packaged and deployed properly, it will bring you rewards, finance. Hallelujah. Do you know, for instance, if I package my teachings now and turn it into a book, is that value? Is that value? I mean, all that I've been teaching, if I package, at least I know among all of them, even if it's just one, it will be a bestseller. Is that true? Now, what happens? It be, because I have now, I'm adding value. I'm supplying spiritual information to mankind in certain aspects of life. They will be compelled to pay for it. Is someone understanding? You can have a room that is empty. No man comes there. The day you start adding value in that room, people start coming. Listen, please. Listen. I want to tell you something very powerful and I pray it will change your life. You do not look for money. Money is attracted. Get this. Never forget it. There are people who, have you had that statement? I'm looking for money. Stop looking. It doesn't work that way. You don't look for money. Money is attracted by obeying certain definite laws. Hallelujah. Our parents have had this mindset, oh, I'm looking for money. Let me look for money. Where is it? Hallelujah. You don't just look for money. There are things you do that bring financial resources to you. Are you understanding what I'm teaching? Stop trying to look for money because sincerely speaking, it is not missing. It is only waiting for something that it can come in exchange for. Welfare. Do you still sell Zobo? Huh? You, they've not started. How many of you know that because they are not offering any value to you now, you will carry your, your 10 naira or 100 naira and go home with it. But the moment they put yogurt there or Zobo, what happens? They have now packaged value. After praying and shouting, you are thirsty. Correct? And you are compelled to bring this out and you will give them and they will give you something in exchange. Stop trying to look for free money. It doesn't exist. There is always something you have. And the degree of value you offer is the degree to which financial resources come to you. Please, I want you to understand this. I'm teaching you the fundamental principle a very powerful natural law that commands prosperity. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I have something. Very quickly, let's do a workshop for two minutes. Write a list of things you know you have that if you train, God can use it to honor you. Write it quickly. Please, everybody. Leadership skills, write it. An extremely pretty face, Queen Esther, write it. Oratory, write it. I don't just mean noise making and ability to talk anyhow. Oratory, write it. Please write it. You think God has given you an anointing. There's nothing to feel. You are not being arrogant. This is a workshop. Everybody participate. Write it. There are things I know I have. If I say I don't have them, it's a lie. I don't have everything, but Kai, there are some things I have. There are some things you have. Write it. For the first time, be sincere with yourself and say, I'm fine. What is there? Let me just say it. Write it. And say, I'm brilliant. I have leadership skills. Write it. Please look at what you're writing. Don't just, we're very serious. Don't just write something that you can't show somebody else. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. There is something you have. Hallelujah. This ability to teach is value that I can add. Is that true? I go for ministrations and I don't sell the anointing. No, I don't do that. But every time I go for ministrations, what happens? 
for standing to teach the people of God and bless them. They package what they call honorarium and then there are people who are individually blessed in the meeting and they come with envelopes and say, sir, we want to bless you. We want to honor you. What that means is the more you develop yourself, you are attracting wealth to yourself. That means you, prayer is capital. The Holy Ghost is capital. When you become anointed, if you lay hands on a sick body and is healed, you are not selling the anointing. But trust me, if it is notable enough, men will come and pay you for it. You have a prophetic dimension. I mean, look at all, all kinds of prophets, whether fake or real. Is a business that is selling anyhow in Nigeria. Now, I know that there are, there are genuine servants called of God. Hallelujah. Do you think if a man comes to prophesy in your life and tells you the truth and it happens and you are blessed, no matter how greedy you are, you will be too grateful not to forget the person. You will come and say, sir, or papa, or daddy, or whatever, this is, this is a blessing from God. Brothers and sisters, the secret to conquering inferiority is to have something the world cannot reject you for. They may criticize you, but there is this treasure in earthen vessels. I can never be intimidated in my life. Never. I can be challenged. But to be intimidated is to mock God. He has tried for me. Everybody say, I have something. Say one more time, I have something. Yes, there are some of you that have an anointing. The anointing God has given you, if you respect it and you honor it, it can bring bread to your table. But many of us are playing around and doing all kinds of things. You do not know that everything God gives you is value and you can give that value. I told you it's a law. See, listen, if you understand this and you are a worker in church, you will not just work to be paid because whether you are paid or not, it is a law. You can't change it. Every time value is offered, what happens? Finance. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Do you know that if a woman comes here and she's selling pure water right now, will she make money? Everybody answer me, will she make money? But if she doesn't sell, will she be sitting at her house and money will come? Value. 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 Every time you master the art and the ability of adding value, you increase. There is something you have. Everybody say, I have something. Say it, I have something. Some of you, what you have is on common leadership abilities uncommon leadership abilities you have uncommon leadership abilities beyond imagination you are extraordinary leaders but you cannot develop yourself because you think it cannot bless you we are still talking about the concept of value the bible says proverbs 18 verse 16 the gift I told you to replace that word with what value the value of any man can make room. I'm telling you, those can be shorting over others. How many of you have seen people who, maybe those with sirens, and they tell you there's no place to pass. But the moment they are coming, they tell you people who are begging, you know, shift, and then they open the place and say, sir, and they just pass it, and they say, like we're saying, there's no space. You just saw that there was space. It's just that you have not become notable enough. The day you become notable, that door will open. Is someone getting what I'm saying? The African culture has cheated us by making us believe that we do not have anything. Say, I have something. There is something you have that the world can celebrate you for. I'm telling you, there is something you have. I walk with this consciousness. There is an anointing that I have. If you don't have anything, you have experience. And you can package that experience in a book. And people will come to glean from your wisdom. If you don't have success, you have enough failures to advise people. You have something at every time. Yeah.
I'm teaching you right now. I'm adding spiritual values. Are you seeing why men of God are rich? They are not just rich because they were called of God. Are you getting my point? Many men of God do not understand the full dynamics of why they are prosperous. So they design a prosperity message such that for you to be prosperous, you must become a man of God. Question, if God has not called you to the fivefold ministry, how do you become rich? Are you, are you following me now? Say in the name of Jesus, I reject poverty. Say it in the name of Jesus. I reject poverty. I reject lack. There is something I have that the world will pay for. There is something I have that can open doors for me. Say it one more time in the name of Jesus. I refuse to feel inferior. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to feel like a nobody. There is an ability in me. There is wisdom in me that I can exchange for financial resources. When you understand this, when you understand this, you will know that if you remain poor in this life, it's not God's fault. Are you getting my point now? There is something that you have. Oh, hallelujah, I have something. Can we pray just in one minute while you're seated? I want you to just bless the Lord and say, I have something. No devil will deceive me. I have something. It may not show now. You may be an abject failure right now from the perspective of men. But I tell you, there's this treasure. There is an anointing on your life that can compel nations to bow. Opportunity has not been given yet, but it does not mean it's there. That prophetic gift can feed nations and reward you. That entrepreneurial spirit can bless you. Your beauty can bring food on your table without compromising kingdom values. There is something you have. Your course, the course that you are reading or you've read, can bring food on your table. Is value everything that constitutes an advantage? Please pray one minute. There is something I have, Jesus. It may not speak today, but it will speak. It may not speak today, but it will speak. Nations may not see it today. Men may mock you as you are developing it, but it has capacity. To make you a, a city that is on a hill that cannot be hidden. Gender notwithstanding. Your background notwithstanding. Your limitations notwithstanding. Hallelujah. Say, I have something. Stop thinking you are the helpless ones waiting for people to help you. Is what we got from colonialism. Are you getting my point now? That's the mindset. Listen. Read Matthew Ashimo Law's book, Black and Blessed. He led a powerful revolution that almost cost him um, trouble in Europe. He let people know that it's not a cause to be black. The color of your skin has nothing to do with your destiny. Are you getting my point now? They brought the spirit of servitude to Africa. And they made people look like if you are not a white man, you are destined to be a slave. Your job is to serve. And this is the same mindset, let me tell you the truth, that is in our educational system. From 100 level, you're already thinking, who will give me a job? Oh, I'm reading this and that. I'm reading this course. It's not marketable. Some of our parents have put pressure on us. You must read medicine. Whether you like it or not, it is lucrative. Now, don't blame them. They are only doing the best with the revelation they have. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. The gift of a man can make room for him. Are you getting my point now? The gift of a man. I was watching one of Benny Hinn's videos and he was going to a crusade and the president of the nation together with the entourage, they were waiting for him at the airport. As soon as he landed, these presidents and these people are not born again. Oh. They are not born again. But there is value that is going to add to that nation. Hallelujah. 
you will add value in this Nigeria, they will change your passport to a diplomatic passport. No more begging for visa. It becomes a privilege to move around. Yes. Hallelujah. There is something that can make anybody, Christian, Muslim, atheist, they can't deny your presence. There is something that would, de there are men of God, there are all classes of men of God. Fine, ugly, it does not make any difference as far as the needs of men are, are available. Is that true? No matter how ugly I look, if you need healing, you won't look at my face again. You will look at something I have. And you must honor me, I will come and sit down. Because you won't keep me at the back. There is something I carry. Everybody say, there's something I carry. Oh yes, there is something you carry. There is something you carry that you can give in exchange. The devil has perverted it. But after tithing, giving, there are some of our mothers here. You may be looking at yourself and you are, you are thinking you are old. You are not old enough to release your, I mean you are not beyond the age to release your value and be blessed. I'm going to be teaching us all these things. But I want to press on this issue of value. Every time you go somewhere, I'd like you to see what they do not have that you have. That becomes your entrance into that place. Are you getting my point now? There are places I go to, nobody knows me, I just sit down quietly. Five, ten minutes, someone is looking at me. Are you not Joshua Selman, the gift of a man? And while they are riding, I say, Lord, it's not my fault. I, it's not my fault. When you called me, I said yes. Value. There are some of you, God has given you unusual ability. You can write. Your works are speaking. One lecturer just looked at you and told you all kinds of nonsense. And said, I'm the best student in this faculty. And nobody will come. Let me tell you, anybody that thinks you will not become anything, you will shock them in this life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, you cannot speak English well. But there is something you can do that does not need English. In China, they refuse to learn English on purpose. Because they believe they will take charge of the world. And everybody must learn Chinese whether he likes it or not. Right now you turn your deep freezer upside down. And you are punishing yourself trying to read what they wrote. Because they are offering something you must buy. Everybody say value. You can choose it. Produce something and write it in your language. Write it in tongues. Write it whatever. And force the world to read it. Hallelujah. Mention everyone who is truly wealthy and I can tell you the value they are adding to the world. Mention one arm robber and there is no value they are adding. Huh? When you talk of Bill Gates, he has changed the world because of what he's offering. Zuckerberg, mention all of them. Don't dream of just becoming rich by putting little dots of oil and draw a cross on your head. This is, let me tell you, it can bring favor, but you will lack the resources to maintain and multiply it at that level. Everybody say there's something I have. Don't think business. I'm not talking of business. I'm talking of something. We've not spoken about all those things. I'm talking of something that you have. Hallelujah. This lady fainted now. This is not, I, I don't know if she fainted or fell under the anointing. Whatever happened, it has, listen, until there is a problem, you are unnecessary. Says Dr. Mike Mudok. Until there is a problem, one of my greatest mentors on wisdom, that guy is a bank of wisdom. One minute with him, he tears you into pieces with the wisdom. He has mastered the art of wisdom. Mm. Hallelujah. Until there is a problem, you are what? Unnecessary. As simple as that. If you don't need revelation, Joshua Selman is unnecessary. Except if I so have something else to offer to you. If you if you want to sing, if you want good music, come Sam. If you want good music, you are not going to invite me. Nobody, it is, I can't remember the last time anybody invited me to their church to come and sing. Have I not been singing? Answer me, have I not been singing? Why 
Why is it that when you, are, you put it there, word minister, don't confuse us. We are bringing you because of that aspect. Is that true? I was a music director. I've said it many times. Has he made you invite me to come and teach the choir? Because I have not developed myself enough. Hallelujah. This is what is bringing bread for somebody. Play something, Mike. Increase the volume and just play anything. Change the voice and play something that will glorify Jesus Christ. Really, listen, listen. I want to show you the excellency of value. You remain inferior and you keep criticizing people and dying in silence until something in you brings you out of that realm. Look at people who are always criticizing. They, they have not discovered something that they have to give. So every time they look at somebody, what are they trying to show us? Rise and become colleagues in that realm where there are very few people. Leave those struggling down and rise up. Play mic. Anything. Everybody say value. value. This can be side one. As simple as that. Are you getting what I'm saying? Powerful moments of worship. You think it will sell? Answer me. If you wake up with this and this is charging your spirit. This is, hold on. Many people say he's just ministering. The tape they are going to package, is it free? Value. Value. Sam, you will sing. I always like doing this with for time's sake. We'll just have one. Sing any song you like, anything at all. Listen. And you will know the difference between him and me. You will know that it's not as if God is unjust. Are you getting my point? I will lift my voice. And I will sing, I will sing holy, I will sing holy to my Lord and Savior, my God and King, I will sing holy. I will sing holy. I will raise the voice. I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. I will worship Him. I will worship Him and give the praise to Him alone. He who was near. Hallelujah, I will sing before the strong forever. Hallelujah, listen. That takes us to the next principle we're talking about. Everybody write competence. Write it down, competence. I will show you why some people will die broke. Doesn't matter how much they are, whether they pray for 100 years. Their spirits will be electrified, but as far as finance is concerned, mm -mm. trust me. Hallelujah. Everybody write competence. I want to make you hate average right now, and I pray for the grace to do it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Look up, everybody. I sing, right? Why will you prefer Sam to me? Is it that I cannot sing the song? If the boy is listening to this financial... Oh, okay, he's following his mother. Are you following me now? Everybody, why since I sing and Sam sings too, what is the difference between two of us? Please be honest. 
not just value, we all have value. What's the difference? The degree to which we have developed that value. Is that true? Is that true? Look at me. Tonight, I want you to be very sincere for the first time for some of you. Stop lying to yourself. The Bible says, don't esteem yourself more than is meet. There are many of you claiming you are competent over some things you are not competent about. And you are wondering, why are doors not opening for me? Because you have not pressed enough. There is a level of extraordinary competence you enter. It's a realm of rest. There is no competition there. Hallelujah. If I'm to sing with Sam right now, I will just leverage on the anointing of the Holy Spirit in my life. I'll just say, Lord, forget about the voice. Praise the Lord. Say, I refuse poverty. Competence. Look up. Do you know that competence attracts all kinds of people and resources to your life? What is competence? Leadership, excellence, the ability to surpass ordinary standards, extremely accurate, mastery. There's a song they call Music of the Masters. Men who have mastered the art of not making mistakes. They have demonstrated in this realm that it is possible. So when you watch them play, they are not trying to look for where Kiji and Ino, they are just laughing and enjoying the groove. Listen, brothers and sisters, when you imbibe the law of competence in everything you do, whether I'm not, you, you notice now I've not mentioned any word business, whether in ministry, there are ministers who they love God, but they don't study scripture. They don't know that they tell you Genesis 1 verse 1 and, and quote nonsense. And they won't go back to listen to themselves and correct themselves. See, let me tell you something. There is one man that challenges me, Bishop Oyedeko. He doesn't just quote the regular verses. He will fish out one verse. He will say something that may not make sense and pull out its scripture and then say it. It was from him that I learned that it is good for a, a man to do what? Remember that our scripture? What is it again? To bear his yoke in his youth. Competence. You want to be a man of God. Let me tell you, if all you think makes ministry is falling under the anointing, you will throw people down till the day there's nobody again in your parish or in your church. Let me tell you, listen, listen. You must build yourself. There are aspects of your life that you must be diligent. I'm not talking of everything. What is that one thing that you know that I'm good in this one? God is my witness whom I serve with my conscience. He can take me anywhere. Many of you are average, average in many things. You say I'm, I'm multi-talented. None of them has brought food on your table. You are multi-talented over little average things. Why don't you strive for competence? The Bible says, if a man desires mastery, he is not crowned until he strives lawfully. There are aspects of my life I've told myself and I've made a covenant with myself and vowed before God that I will be so competent. God is speaking to someone right now. Hallelujah. It's, it's true that you have something, but that something is not enough to take you anywhere. And everywhere you go, the door closes behind you. Stop begging. It's a sign to go back. Build yourself and just stand. You are a city on a hill. The Bible says you cannot be hidden. There are ministers carrying complimentary cards all around. I'm, I'm a prophet. If you invite me, I promise you, you will see the hand of God in your ministry. My brother, if you find yourself marketing yourself, it's a sign you are not prepared. Proverbs 31, 31, and let her works speak for her at the gates. You don't speak for your works. Hallelujah. There are people with all kinds of complimentary cards. They have offices with AC. They have 
two or three screens, there's no value, there's no competence, they can't do anything. And this is the deceit you find around. Everybody just comes and says, okay, I am this, I am that. Very fine table, nice jeep parked outside, there is nothing to offer. I'm challenging you right now. If you believe God is going to use your degree, and you believe that your degree is one of the tools you will use. What is wrong with stretching it to the extra mile? Go for your masters. Get a masters and be confident. So that they stop shutting the door at you. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. It's, it's my natural disposition. I dislike lazy people. If you are around me, it's impossible to be lazy. I will just send you away. People sleeping for hours without any work to account for why they are sleeping for that long. Hallelujah. Let me, I'm challenging you. Many youths in Nigeria are lazy. They are just hustlers. So it looks like they are hardworking. Hustling is not the same as smart work. Hustling is just to be hitting left, right, and center anywhere. I know one door will open. No, you don't make it that way. There is something you have. For somebody, somebody can say, this is the rod of God in my hands. And you're going to say, Lord, I will carry this rod. That's what people like Frank Edwards did. Is that true? They took this keyboard and the voice that God gave them. And they said, Lord, I'm taking it. And right now, look at comedians in Nigeria. 2.5 million. These guys go, these guys go to London and collect 30 pounds per seat. Nigerians, just to make you laugh. And now, you may think that they don't know what they are doing. They are not clowns. Try to make people laugh and see if it's easy for people to laugh. Do you know how frustrated you become when you give series of jokes and the people are looking at you? So don't think, you know, it's easy to look at them and feel these guys are just lousy boys, either because of their hair or this. You don't know what books they've read. And, and the way, this is, and I'm, I'm going to say this, if you are a gospel artist here, stand up. Gospel artist, if you are not sure, just quietly remain seated. I'm, I, I don't intend to embarrass you, but honestly, be confident. If you know you are a gospel artist, a worshiper, okay, whatever, stand up. I'm serious, I'm serious. Whether inside or outside, please stand up. Let me challenge you this night because you must prosper. You can hate me now, but you thank me tomorrow. Now, how many of you can show me three people, three people whose works mentor you and build you according to the area you see God taking you? Let me see your hands. Don't lie. Don't lie. Correct? Are you seeing now? This is a measure of your desire for competence. There is no reason why we should invite somebody from Koinonia here who would do what we are already doing. There is no reason. Hallelujah. I'm challenging you. Your voice, your gift can make room for you. You don't need to market yourself. You need no nonsense complimentary card. What you need is gift with proof that can deliver. Oedeko said the end of every argument is proof. Mukhtar is the person who, who dry cleans my, my, my suits and my shirt. I've not, I've not had the desire. Even while he was serving, he comes to do it because he has done it so well. When people like you, they will give all kinds of excuses about you. No matter what people say about you, it's only a matter of time. It will pass and they will focus on what they have to get from you. Hallelujah. How many of you rehearse worshipers? I'm challenging you. How many of you get up in the morning? Some of you are music directors in your churches. You know that what you are producing in that church is nothing to write home about. But there's nothing to challenge you. See, if you live around local champions who clap for you, even when you are wrong, you will be broke in life. There are some of us that come, you sing nonsense, and somebody comes to tell you, wow, Jesus, and you are saying, really? 
tell yourself the truth. I can get there, but I'm not there yet. Don't see Sam and say we are colleagues. You are not colleagues. Make yourself a protege. This equality nonsense is killing the body of Christ. We are equal in Christ. We are not equal in value. Are you getting me now? So challenge yourself. This is what I tell the worship team all the time. Hallelujah. This is what I, I challenge the leaders. If there is nobody, there are some of us, we hate challenges. We want everybody telling you it's all right. In the school of prosperity, it does not work like that. The Bible says, provoke one another unto godliness. I'm challenging you. Some of you have beautiful voices potentially. You are sitting here and then there are some of you, you are already looking for exposure. You only rest on the seventh day. If you are trying to rest now, you are deceiving yourself. At my level right now, if I try to rest and I say I've gotten it in ministry, is the height of self-deception. I can't say God has not tried for me, but there are heights. There are people who have gone ahead of us and they have shown us possibilities that exist in Christ. And we must press. I don't hang around psychophants. I hate liars. I'm not saying don't be around people who bless you and encourage you but i am teaching you there is a way you can tame poverty competence everybody say competence please sit down god bless you those of you who believe god is calling you to be entrepreneurs i don't just mean you like business you really believe there is an aspect of your life like that stand up let's see them I assume that you are standing up intentionally without any kind of coercion. You know what you are doing. Let me challenge. I really want to challenge you tonight because I love you. Listen. If you cannot show me two to three people at least whose books, whose lives, whose videos are mentoring you and building you, I'm telling you straight to the point. You are not following the right path. Are you getting my point now? Who is challenging you? Who is challenging you? You want to become a public speaker. You can't speak well. It has not been a source of concern. You are saying it does not matter. That's the rod of God on your hand. Does it take 10 years to learn English? Can't you go and subscribe for extramoral English? See, this is the problem. Many people think if you do not humble yourself, you will die of poverty. There are times you need to go and learn. Please don't feel offended. I'm not just lashing you out of hatred. I love you from the depths of my heart. I hope you understand. I just want to, I want to provoke you to know that there is a way to the top. And that that thing does not come by dash. We've spoken about the spiritual laws. But brothers and sisters, you can be so competent. You can be the very best. People pack auditoriums. When people like Zig Ziglar are going to speak, they pay hundreds of thousands of dollars. Nigeria brought Les Brown and they paid so much money to hear a man come and speak for two hours. What is it about talking? Hallelujah. Please sit down. Show me the project you are currently doing in your life. Show me the book where you are currently writing something you are working on. And I know that you are already on your way out of poverty. I don't care if you are taking Gary right now. But show me the flamboyancy you are doing. Fine lady, handsome guy. And I show you a big deceit that will cost you so much in life. There are many people claiming what they are not. Listen, brothers and sisters, this is the school of prosperity. It's time to settle down. The minimum standard in the world today is excellence. That's the minimum standard. Whether spiritually or otherwise. That's why we pray. By the grace of God, we have a robust prayer team. And everybody has that spirit of excellence. But there are things I do every day. And where I don't, I cannot do it, I always try to catch up and make up. My spiritual life. I build myself in leadership. I build myself in entrepreneurship. You must build yourself in these areas. 
challenge yourself tonight. I will be competent. I receive grace. This is your exit out of your present state. God is speaking to someone tonight. This is your exit out of your present state. If you've been suffering complex and inferiority, if you're always feeling offended when you see others, it's because you have not seen the rod of God in your hands. There is something you can hold that can part the Red Sea for you. Let me tell you something. There is something. You do not go and stand before the Red Sea without nothing. What do you have that can part that river for you? Hallelujah. The value of a man makes room for him. I read a book years ago by John Mason called The Enemy, called Average. And I challenged myself that I was never going to live an average life. Please listen to me. This could be an understanding that will exit you out of poverty forever. I call it intentional prosperity. Prosperity that you entered intentionally. You know what you did that brought you. It was not magic. When it comes to prosperity, it's not just about miracles. It's about principles that can be reproduced again and again and again. This becomes the basis of your confidence. Is God changing somebody tonight? The place is quiet tonight. God is speaking to somebody. Hallelujah. Write this word down, please. In your journey to prosperity, there are three major things you will need to develop aside from all of these things. Number one, or three levels of knowledge. You must acquire what I call financial intelligence. Part of what I'm giving you is financial intelligence. Please write financial intelligence. Number two, you need financial planning. Intelligence is good, but it's not enough. Financial planning. Number three, you need financial discipline. Today I'm going to announce a few books. I've read a lot of books. But there are a few that I truly believe. You don't need to read everything. But there are a few books that can help you. What is financial intelligence? The sum total of all the knowledge and information you will need that helps you understand how money works. The sum total of all the knowledge and information you will need that helps you understand how money works is called financial intelligence. You need financial intelligence. The educational system in Nigeria does not have a structure that provides adequate financial intelligence. For instance, I redefined money for you. I told you a number of things, how that money responds to value. All of these informations culminate in what we call financial intelligence. Hallelujah. Financial intelligence also helps you to develop what we call in business an investor mentality, not a consumer mentality financial intelligence many Christians in the body of Christ have money but they do not have financial intelligence they don't know how money works there are many churches that the men of God are anointed and God is blessing them but because they lack financial intelligence they do not know what to do I look forward to times when we will not have to talk about this again because everyone will be blessed we can now concentrate on other aspects of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Financial pursuit is not supposed to be a lifetime pursuit. It's a cause when it becomes a lifetime pursuit. What that means is that from your birth to the day you die, you live your entire life looking for money you never found. Some of our parents are 70 years right now. Some 80 years. Ask them what they are still doing. They tell you they are looking for money. My Bible tells me, except the Lord builds a house. It says they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. The watchmen watch it, but in vain. The Bible says it is vain 
to wake up early in the morning, Nigerians, and sleep late in the night. What's the reward? Only to eat the bread of sorrow. The Bible says, but he gives unto his beloved sleep. Hallelujah. Financial intelligence helps you to understand that every time money enters your hand, I've, I've explained it, part of it is for God, part of it is for you, and part of it is, your, is for your future. Please write it down. Every money that enters your hand is divided into three. One part for God, one part for your consumption right now, another part for your future. If you wear the clothes you should wear tomorrow, now you'll be naked tomorrow. If you eat the food you should eat tomorrow, now you will die hungry tomorrow. So write it. This is financial intelligence. Understanding all the information that helps money to stay in your hands. Every time money comes into your hands, just know, please look up everybody. Put this as a golden rule in your life from today. Every major money that comes into your life, know that the tithe belongs to the Lord. And any other kingdom investment, part of it belongs for you today, your expenditures, and then investment for your tomorrow. You cannot forget about your tomorrow. You cannot walk into a future you are not prepared for. Some of our parents are crying and dying right now. When they were, when they were young, land, you would sell land, maybe 250 naira in our today's money. Their colleagues were buying it. They, they were eating and drinking beer and, and doing all kinds of things, going to the market square and causing trouble. Now they are 50 years, 60 years. Let me tell you something. This life, I want to teach you a powerful lesson. This life is divided into four major phases. This is a digression, but let me help you understand. If you understand this, you will wake up right now and you will know that time waits for no one. Everybody right. Your life is divided into four phases. There is the morning phase of your life. There is the afternoon phase of your life. There is the evening phase of your life. And there is the night phase of your life. The first 25 years of your life constitute the morning phase of your life. The second 25 years of your life constitutes the afternoon phase of your life. God is challenging somebody. God is whipping childishness out of somebody with this word. The, the third 25 years from 51 to what now? 75 constitutes the evening phase of your life. Everything afterwards constitute the night phase please look up and let me explain to you the bible says so teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart unto wisdom listen it is expected by god that at the maximum of 25 years let me challenge you koinonia that at 25 years some things should have happened in your life are you getting my point at 25 you should be born again. You should have known the Lord. You should have been filled with the Holy Spirit. And you would have understood the principles of the kingdom. That means if you are after or over 25, you, are, you have entered the second season of your life already. And that means you must catch up. Listen, please. God is speaking to somebody. There's too much childishness in the body of Christ and we must kick it out by letting everyone know that what when you were mentioning future yesterday today was part of that future now that today has come that gentleman that came to give his testimony a bishop was reminding me I remember when he came post UME to imagine that he's rounded up service today I almost cannot believe it but that's the brevity of time Many of you can still remember the day you carried your iron box and you were entering your secondary school. Look at you today. Don't ever let the devil make you feel there is time. Have you heard that word? Some of you may be 16, 19, 20, 30. You are saying there is. Once you are 25 years old, that's the learning phase of your life. That's the time of your life you can make mistakes and go scot-free. Are you getting my point? After that time, some things begin to cost you. Listen, 
I'm teaching you this thing because some of us never had this opportunity. Are you getting my point now? Some of you just got old. How old are you? 34, 35. Are you born again? No. Feel the Holy Spirit? No. What do you know about life? Nothing. The second phase of your life, listen, is the phase where you begin to make quality investments for your destiny. Where you begin to put to use what you have learned in the first 25 years of your life. Now, if you catch up, it's an advantage. 25 years. Maximum of 25. Once you are at 25 and some God is speaking to you because many of us here are over 25. You're just looking, playing around, smiling around. Somebody who is 15 years is playing. You are joining to play with the person. You are 10 years um, behind schedule. The lady is sleeping around, doing every kind of thing. You two are 25, sleeping around, believing that I will get husband one day. Ladies, listen. Let me challenge you this night. Whether you believe it or not, ladies, hear me. I want to talk to you right now. And I want to talk to you from the depths of my heart. Listen to me. A day will come in your life when the men around your age group would have been married. Are you getting my point? That means the earlier you become a virtuous lady and position yourself, the better. I'm not scaring you. I'm only telling you the truth. Hallelujah. At age 40, the probability to hear God to make any marital decision is almost zero. Is that true? There are some of us who just live carelessly. Honestly, I'm preaching from the depths of my heart. God is telling somebody, wake up. You have all kinds of roles of boyfriends and people around one for Monday, one for Tuesday. Continue. The Bible says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. You are sowing. You will enter the next phase of your life and turn back and say, why is my life like this? And God says, it's in my law. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Hallelujah. Many of you who are a lot younger, you have a big opportunity. Stop saying I'm a child. In Nigeria, what's the age for adulthood? 18 years, right? Many people are more than 18 years. Yeah. So what makes you think? And there are two words that have made the youth in Nigeria. It has cheated the youth in Nigeria. One is adolescence. Two is young adults. Kick those words out of your life. If you are, if you are an adult, you are an adult. You are sleeping around and calling yourself a child. They say, I, I'm adolescent. What does that mean? So you can play around. Let me tell you, stop dreaming. If you are an adult, an adult is one who is not a child. Simple. Financial dominion. There are sisters playing around with their opportunities, playing around with the youthfulness of their lives. I'm not saying just jump around and say yes to anybody, but what are you doing? You are not positioning yourself. You are there gossiping about people. Just You have 20 toasters. Keep watching. Keep watching as the toasters marry. And you'll find out at a point that it will be Ichabod, the glory. It's, it's not that God calls you. That's how life works. And brothers, don't think I will not come to you. Because there are many of you. Let me tell you something. You should have no business looking at any lady if you have not looked at your life. Any lady that passes around, you are just laughing. Can, can we be friends? I, let's just go out. What to where? To where? Time is going. The morning face of your life is going. I'm challenging you in this place. There are some, it's as if you would die. Who is with you? Many brothers, you can't see a sister pass. She's fine, so walk quickly. Walk quickly. Don't let any brother just come to you. Somebody whose destiny is confused. He doesn't even know what he's doing. Just comes around and twisting his tongue around you. I, I think um, we, should, we should get along. Along where? There 
are all kinds of relationships that don't make sense. Relationships like occultism, like secret society. The people are moving, no vision. They are not going anywhere. They know they are not going to get married. They, they never talk about their future. They are always playing around, playing games. Do you know the hurtful thing, sister? Let me encourage you. That brother can dump you and ask another lady out the next day. But you, it can't be like that for you. It's time to be serious. It's time to be serious. Tell yourself, wake up. Tell yourself, wake up. The Bible says, arise thou that sleepeth. And Christ shall give thee light. Financial intelligence. How did I get into relationship? Hallelujah. The second is financial planning. So financial intelligence talks of all the knowledge and the information. I was talking about four phases of our lives. Morning phase, the learning state. Afternoon phase, the investment state. Between 25 to 50 years, according to the word of God and according to the principles of God, that's the time for you to have built a house. That's the time for you to have raised and trained your children. Are you getting my point? That's the time for you to have done certain structural things around your life. The evening stage of your life is the time of resting and legacy. That's when you should be resting. That's the time you should turn back and start writing books. Have a foundation that is blessing and building others. There are many of our parents, 70 years, they are struggling, even fighting with us. The land is my own. The son says, I paid you 10 years ago. I say, I can't remember. And it shouldn't be. Brothers and sisters, wake up. Wake up. There are some of us here, the truth is God has been faithful. Some of our parents have trusted us with lots of money, lots of things. We are there playing around, doing all kinds of things. Tonight, I'm not condemning you, but I'm saying for the first time, brother, can you just tell my, yourself, where am I going? The Bible says, when the prodigal son came to himself, nobody conducted deliverance. You can come to yourself. And tonight, God is asking somebody to come to himself. Tell yourself, wake up. Say it, wake up. So financial planning. It's often said that he who fails to plan has planned to fail. You must know how to plan your resources. Plan your resources. Hallelujah. Plan your resources. Structure your life. There's still one more session, the session of wealth creation. I'm going to teach you. When I teach you on streams of income, the secret to oceanic wealth, um, investment mentality, three to five year plan for wealth, we'll, we'll round up with that one. Hallelujah. <sighs> Financial planning has to do with the execution of your ideas, the execution of your knowledge. You don't just get up and start doing business or get up and just get a job. What do you want in your life? Look at me. Let me just give you a bit of a theory of financial planning. Right. How much do you think you will need for consistent cash flow per month? Please don't write anything that doesn't make sense. Something very reasonable. How much do you think? How much do you know? I'm not Forget about your job or what you are doing. How much cash flow do you think you will require to be effective? This is financial planning. And then you bring together a summation of all your assets and liabilities. What are your expenditures? What are your expenditures? Expenditures are the things that take money from you. Assets are the things that bring money to you. If your liabilities are greater than your assets, you are going to be broke. There's no question about that. Next week is miracle service. but Oh, by the way, let me just ship it in here. Next week, we're meeting at Charity and Faith. Please take note. The miracle service will be taking place at Charity and Faith. Please write it and don't forget. Let's not have people coming here. Charity and Faith, 530. 
Liabilities are the things that take money from you. So if you are buying perfume, you are buying a nice cloth, that's liability. What asset is replenishing the resource that liabilities are taking? Are you getting me? So it's a game of asset and liabilities. Wealthy people always have more assets than liabilities. I don't want to go ahead of myself. Next week, I'll, we'll be talking or after the last series will be the first week of March. We'll talk about the rich and the poor. What is the difference between them? And then a few things will wrap up that series. Right? I will come back. I will revisit these things again. Financial planning. Very important. You must know how to plan your finances. I will teach you when we come back to this. I'll teach you the principles of budgeting. Many of us don't know how to budget. You spend as it comes. 10,000, you blow it. 50,000, you blow it. 5,000, we do not understand. And it's not our fault. You must know how to budget. Look at me. If Sam has 10,000 naira, all right? And you come to Sam and you say, please, I want to drink ice cream. And Sam says, sorry, I don't have money for ice cream. It doesn't mean he doesn't have money. It's that within his budget, he has structured his money such that there is no room for ice cream. Are you getting my point? When you budget, you will know how to save. You will know how to build your life. One of our sisters in this place, I remember she came and met me. She had been saving years ago and she met me early this year. And she said, I want to buy a plot of land. And I looked at her. I said, what? Tiny lady like you, how do this? I hope, of course, you can't say she stole money. But she had been practicing some of these principles. And right now, she went and bought land. This is a young lady. She's not just waiting and hoping for one man to come and say, I married you, I paid your dowry, keep quiet. At her age. So I will teach you principles of budget. That's all about financial planning. To know how to plan your life. You can't just do it. There are many ways you can help yourself to plan finances. Every time money comes, I've taught you. Part of it is for God. Part of it is for you. Part of it is for your future. You must develop a futuristic investment mentality. You can't just spend and eat everything. You are going to build one day. You are going to build one day. You are going to, if you don't have land, you are broke. I don't care how much you have. Kings in ancient times were rich because of two things. Land and people. Land and people. Land, all the cattle and everything, they were together with the land. That's why land is called real estate. When I teach you on wealth creation, I'm going to teach you the trinity of wealth. Hallelujah. We talked about the secret to oceanic wealth. We'll talk about all of that. Multiple streams of income. I don't want to go into it. The last phase is financial discipline. After making all those planning, it takes discipline. Everybody say financial discipline. There are so many people. January, they, wrote, they, they write a lot of things. I want to do this. I want to do that. But they don't end up doing it. Maybe your goal this year is to say, I want to save 50,000. Or 100,000. And you are saying that based on the 10, 10,000 that is coming for you every month. And you made up all 15,000 that you will live just within the range. See, let me tell you something. Um, we'll still do that wealth creation, but let me just say it. There is what they call in the business world the 70 30 principle. Please write it. The 70 30 principle. What that means is that. Out of the 100% of your money that comes, 10% is for God and 20% is for savings towards investment. The remaining 70% is your own. Whatever 70% of your income cannot give you, you are not yet ready for it. Are you getting me now? So you can have 100,000. For instance, if 100,000 comes, how much is your tithe? How much will you save now? 20,000. So you are saving 20,000. Open an account that the branch is not in Zaria. It's one way of helping yourself. Destroy your ATM. Break it into pieces. It's one way of helping yourself.
Hallelujah. Everybody said discipline. By and large, at the end of every planning is discipline that separates men from boys. Anybody can say, I will do this. Discipline is the ability to stay on course. The ability to abide by your principles. You must be disciplined. It's very tempting. You just enter a boutique and you see a very nice dress. And you feel like buying it maybe because they are giving discount. And you look at 70% of your money. You budgeted it and you found out that there's no space. You can't just say, let me quickly touch from that one. You see, that's indiscipline. May God bless our mothers. I said it during Kingdom Well Summit. Women are better savers than men. True or false? Yeah, it's true. It's very true. It's very true. You can see a woman, she can be collecting a salary of 20,000, but she can be saving two, two or four, four thousand. And a man who is collecting 100,000 will come and be begging her and she can bring some money out. She won't keep it in the bank. She can keep it in, women keep money in all kinds of places. But at least it works. Women spend and spend and spend. I'm very bad in saving. I don't waste money, but I, I give to a fault, I believe. So because of that one now, I am very bad in saving. Praise God. And so I had to create a system and a structure to help me. You must understand yourself and plan and be disciplined. Some of you right now, you came out to pay your tithe. And the sincere truth is, they sent some money for you. This is end of the month. Some of you next month, they are going to send something. Some of you, your salaries are coming in. Begin to save. If you're married, agree with your wife. Tell her, honey, let's, we, are, we are going to plan our future. Let me tell you something. At the end of this series, I'm going to give you a five-year plan. Hallelujah. Within five years, if you follow this plan, there is nothing on earth that will stop you from being a millionaire. Five years, realistically. Open your eyes. Will you open your ears? Then you'll understand that the Lord is here. Open your eyes. Will you open your ears? Then you'll understand that the Lord is here. The principle of seed faith. Please give me 10 minutes and we'll be done. I must teach you on this. The principle of seed faith. Or a robot is believed to be the man who opened the body of Christ to the revelation behind what we call the principle of seed faith. And I must teach you. Please listen. I'm about to share with you a very powerful key. There are not many times I tell you I'm about to share something deep. I want you to believe it. This principle has been abused, but there is a balance. First Corinthians 9. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sorry, Second Corinthians. Did I say first? 2 Corinthians 9. Let's see the principle of seed faith. What is it? Verse 5. But this I say then. Because of time, we'll just go straight. Thank you. Thank you. This I say then. But that's verse 6. I'm sorry. 6. God attaches giving. He, he, he correlates giving to sowing. Are you getting my point? The art of giving, he likens it to a farmer. Please, let's read. I'm about to show you something. But this I say, he that soweth sparingly shall also reap what? 
So he's talking about sowing. Sowing, is that true? And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also. Next verse. Now he says, every man according to his purpose, according as he has proposed in his heart. So let him so giving is sowing. Are you getting my point now? That's the revelation. He shows us the relationship that when you give, you are actually doing what? Sowing. He said, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. So he talks about a sower as a giver. The first revelation of seed faith is that every giving is sowing. Let me explain the law of the seed for you. Please write it. The law of the seed is part of the principle of seed faith. Everything is created from a seed. Everything is created from the seed. A man puts a seed into a woman. She gives him a baby. Is that true? The structure of the kingdom. Every time Jesus speaks about the kingdom, he says the kingdom of God is likened unto a seed a farmer went to sow so everything in the kingdom operates based on seed write it seed harvest see just draw a line seed harvest that means every harvest you want to see in your life i'm teaching you the principle of seed faith now you must understand the law of a seed that your harvest according to genesis 8 22 and second corinthians 4 is dependent on your seed that means when you see that there is any harvest you desire find the seed that can produce that harvest honor is the is the seed for what access thank you i taught you this already so every time you want access and doors are closing what is the seed you want a harvest of honor when god wanted a family he gave his seed jesus christ he sowed jesus christ in the earth and he brought many sons into glory are you getting my point now so this is a very consistent principle the gift of a man is the seed for greatness the seed for prosperity tithe is the seed for open heavens prayer and fasting are the seeds for revival nothing is going to change it people can teach all kinds of garbages and theory prayer and fasting hallelujah prayer is also the seed that produces the harvest of breakthrough among other things is any man afflicted james 5:13 let him pray hallelujah the baptism in the holy ghost is the seed for walking in the spirit and the manifestation of the gift of the spirit so you see that every time you desire a harvest i'm teaching you the principle of seed faith now every time you desire a harvest find out what seed Dr. Mike Mudok said, whatever you have not gotten is because you do not yet know how to receive it. Is someone getting blessed? Now, the principle of seed faith, look, look at me everybody. The principle of seed faith works on this revelation. Sowing something I have by faith in expectation of something that I do not have that I believe God will give me. Are you getting the point now? Sowing something. I want something and that I can lay down a seed as a symbol of my faith. That's why it's called seed faith. Are you getting my point now? That you can lay down something connecting it to something you're trusting God to do. This is the summary of the principle of seed faith does it work absolutely it has a place in the kingdom it is a powerful principle i have seen in my own life hallelujah i touched a bit on it the law of honor commanding results the principle of seed faith 
is that you connect with a seed, a desire that you have, something that you desire God to bring to pass in your own life. You can use a seed to tap the grace of God upon a man's life. You can use a seed to connect dimensions and anointings. It is very possible. You can tap, you can use the principle of seed faith. How many of you believe it? It is a principle you begin to practice. So, if somebody buys a car or you want to get married, Pastor Williams is married, Bishop is married, Shade is married, you package a seed and say, man of God, I'm trusting God. Please hear this. It's not just a desire. A seed can provoke certain things to happen in your life. Are you getting my point? It has happened in my life. I live in this reality. The powerful thing about seed, let's connect it with that teaching on sacrifice now, is that in practicing the principle of seed faith, the Lord himself tells you what to lay down. Attaching your faith to it for something you desire. I cannot count how many times God has asked me to empty my account into ministries and into the lives of people and all of that. Connecting to certain things. When I see a man of God that carries a grace that I desire, I don't just come and kneel down and say, please lay hands on me. I activate the law of seed faith. And I say with this seed, it works. I told you last week, when Jacob, when Isaac wanted to bless his sons, he said, go and make me what? Venison. Bring a seed that will provoke something in my life. Please, listen. Don't think this is a gimmick to bring money out of your life. There are certain levels in this life that it will take seed faith to connect you into. You can enter cheaply into certain dimensions. As a ministry, God has helped us to enter some dimensions cheaply by the operation of the law of seed faith. I remember one of my pastor friends, he went into a city, he was starting a church and the church was not opening up and he called me and I laughed. I said, my brother, stop struggling. Just get a pen and paper. Let me teach you how to cause a city to open. If you want to plant a church, when you enter the city, find the largest church in that place and package a seed. There is something that makes people to come there. Whether you believe in them or not is irrelevant. The people are not idiots. You cannot criticize the largest church in a city and expect your church to walk in that dimension. It does not just happen. So you sow the seed of honor and you get a reward back for it. I repented from criticizing men of God years ago when one elderly woman called me and said, my son, don't ever talk about any man of God again. I said, mommy, I repent this day in the presence of God and you. My mouth is sealed. I can only attack wrong doctrines, attack nonsense, but I'm not going to mention any. If I ever mention the name of a man of God, it's because I'm saying something right. Are you getting my point now? You can never criticize Bishop Stan and want his anointing to come. It just doesn't happen. Are you getting my point? Honor is not just money. Honor is not just money. You hold people in, in true, genuine esteem in your heart. And then what is in them flows to you. You can provoke certain dimensions with a seed. Listen to me. God is speaking to someone. Every time you ask God for a new level, he will give you an instruction. There is something you must lay down to go up. You must lay down Isaac to go up. I know that a lot of people have deceived the church. They have manipulated things. But it does not mean that it's not there. There are some of us who have been praying about certain realms and certain dimensions. I remember when Ora Roberts was almost dying. There was a time he was almost dying. It was apparent that he was going to die. He called his wife and he said, honey, how much do we have in the account? And she told him, he said, go and sow everything quickly. He said, do you love me? He said, yes, she was trying to complain. He said, go and sow everything quickly. Do you know as soon as they dropped that seed, 
all of a sudden he started resuscitating and he stayed many more years. Your seed can connect you to graces, doors, anointings, dimensions in the spirit. Please, I want you to believe me. There are people today I know that they carry certain things that God has put in my life in very evident ways. Oyedepo came to Dunamis and he was talking about Enensha. He said that when you see my son, you see that he carries certain things evidently, correctly. I want you to know that your seed is one of the greatest miracles that can happen to you. It can end a season in your life and open up another season. We tried this this year as a ministry. I told the treasurer, package every collection in our koinonia service and we went to sow it. Goodness, goodness, goodness. The results have been fearful. God did something today that touched me in a very personal way. Hallelujah. Somebody sent a very humbling seed into the ministry today. Hallelujah. I want you to believe this. I want you to believe. You must not pay for everything in life. If you understand the principle of seed faith, I was sharing, I think, with the head of protocol. Every time I see people with vehicles and all of the rest, I tell them, sow it, sow it, sow it. I went to just two days ago. On getting to my house, I saw a vehicle parked. Somebody bought a car for me and dropped it here. True story. Two days ago. Somebody bought a car and dropped it. I just left it here. And I just quietly came back. I have seen this thing work in my life. Every time what you have is not enough for a harvest, it is a seed. If you are afraid to lay it down, you can never rise to another level. Listen, God is speaking to many of us here. There are instructions that many of us are afraid. Money never leaves you. That is why money never comes to you. If you conquer greed in your life, you will rise to certain levels of grace. I'm teaching you these irrefutable principles of prosperity. Hallelujah. I remember a time when Kenneth Cope, um, David Oyedeko carried a seed and took it to his mother. He bought shares for her and a table with his first salary. And she looked at him and she prophesied upon him. She said, you shall be great. I never go home without a seed to honor my parents. Never, never, never. Impossible. Even if I'm dying of hunger, I know that that is what will get me out of where I am. Many of you do not believe in this principle. I'm challenging you. You can sow your way out of your present level into a level beyond your imagination. I will never forget when I carried singlet. I carried singlet and I packaged it and I blessed somebody. Pastor, singlet started coming. I didn't know what to do with it. Yeah, I'm not exaggerating. Hallelujah. There are so many gifts that people give me today I don't need. I don't know what to do with it, but it cannot stop coming because I know how to make it happen. Whatever is not in your life, you do not know how to receive. You must challenge yourself this night. Greed will keep you in poverty forever. The law of seed faith works. I've seen it break open doors for people. I'll never forget one woman who came to me she was barren and honestly the, the normal thing is just to pray cast out that spirit of barrenness but the Lord said that she should go to her pastor and sow a seed and she said man of God I confirm this the Lord has been speaking to me about this and she carried that seed do you know she dropped that seed it was not up to two weeks two weeks two weeks he didn't even pray for her who is God speaking to tonight could it be that the answer to the next level of your life is hidden in your seed. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. And I want to challenge you. There are many of you as you pray, God is going to give you dangerous instructions. 
That's why I said we take the principle of seed faith at the end of this service. Please make no, I love you too much to rob you of one naira. I love you too much not to tell you the truth. There are people that God is speaking to you right now. God is speaking to you and is telling you that this is the secret to enter the next level. You have been admiring people. You are seeing people rise to those levels. But you think it just happens by dash. It's not about wishing. There is a law. The Bible says as far as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. I want to challenge you. We are going to pray. I want everybody before we pray, just take one minute and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, what instruction are you giving me? What seed do I need to lay down to rise to a level? Please, if you do not believe what I'm sharing, don't worry. Don't worry. God is talking to many people right here. There is something you have in your hand. He said, what do you have in your house? Hear me. Many of you, this is what will break some chains in your family. This is what will break some cycles of poverty. Some of you, this is the seed that can make you graduate. This is the seed that can make your supervisor listen to you. If you don't believe what I'm saying, no problem. No problem. But I have seen in my life, I have seen God coming in fearful ways in my life. I will never forget when we were preparing for Massacre Crusade. There was nothing. We were broke to the core. It was the principle of seed faith that blessed and honored us. It was one man of God. I sent recharge card of one five to his phone. One man of God. I sent that seed. And almost every day, almost every day, from the day we took a seed and we sowed it in Canaan land, there is almost no day that nobody is sowing in this, that somebody does not sow into this ministry. Whether in cash, whether in kind, somebody needs to sow this seed for their marriage. I'm speaking to you, this is not coercion. God is going to give, I'm not going to give you any instruction, bring any money, I'm not. God is speaking to you. Mandala Pakoshia. You just talk with God for one minute and I'm going to lead us to pray. Somebody's miracle is long overdue. Mandela Jesus, speak to us. Open your heart and hear your maker speak. There is always something you must do. You will remain at that level forever until you know how to provoke your way out. Or a Robert touched the body of Christ. This has been abused. But hear me, Koinonia. May the Lord God of heaven judge me if I stand before the people of God and mislead them. Seed faith will take you out of certain seasons will take you out of certain seasons. You don't need to know how the miracle will happen. You can provoke your way. You can provoke your way. There are people here, the Lord is speaking to you. The Lord is speaking to you. There are sacrifices that you are going to make. I don't pity you at all. I rejoice with you. I made this sacrifice. I told you years ago. I'll never forget when I carried everything that I had, my bag, my whole belonging, and I took it for a prosperity convention. Home and abroad, I dropped it, and the Lord told me from this day, you have entered wealth. We are going to pray. If you cannot give up what you have at your present level, you don't deserve to move to a higher one. I'm giving you a key in the spirit. Rise up, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to challenge everybody. Please bring out a seed. Bring out something. I'm willing to help a few people. If you do not have, I can help you, honestly. 
It's not about money, brothers and sisters. Any, come. A few people. Any. Can take two more people. Hallelujah. There's still one more person. I want you to connect. Okay, sorry. Come, come. Hallelujah. Please, instrumentalist, please play. The power of God will come on some of you. You will run out here by the influence of the Holy Ghost. No man will stop you by the influence of the Holy Ghost. It's the fire of God. It will happen to some people from outside. Outside, the fire of God is falling and even inside. But I want you to know, as I begin to chant in the spirit, there's no hiding place for any devil tonight. So get take a part Lord, let your power move. Every power, every force of darkness. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let it fall. I release the fire. Leave them, leave them, leave them, ushers. Leave them alone. You will come out by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will bring you out from your seat. The Holy Ghost will bring you out from your seat. The Holy Ghost will bring you out from your seat. The Holy Ghost will bring you out. Hallelujah. Now, there are some of you that see men come to sleep with you in dreams and oppress you. They call it spirit husband and spirit wife. I don't care what the name is. Right now, there is fire. Lift your hands, everybody. Responsible for failure. Responsible for delay. Listen. Listen. At the count of three, the Lord showed me in a vision. This one will hit many people. Tonight is a night of deliverance. Many of you do not know this is what is responsible for your setback. I already see angels standing in front and outside. Listen, it's going to, you, know, you will not be able to stand it. It's a fire. Are you ready now? At the count of three, some of you will not finish shouting Jesus. Lord, I pray. You said if I can speak it, you will do it. I stand under this apostolic unction. Every manifestation of the devil at the count of three. One, two, three. Go for Joshua. Regrace you. Go for Yeta.
for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, put to an end. The power of God is still falling. I tell you, devils are under major attack. Bapos attack. The angels are walking. Don't wait till you fall down. Receive. Don't wait till you fall down. Has nothing to do with falling. Yeah. was a sound that I heard in the spirit. That's why I'm singing it. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Bring her. It's time for her deliverance. I command you to come. I command you to come. Don't force her. She will come by the power of the Holy Ghost. Come. Come and stand here. Yeah. 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 Listen. A scripture entered my spirit. It said, how awe-inspiring are your ways. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemy submit when light enters you it makes you a madman tonight is a night of major deliverance major 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 hallelujah leave her alone Stand there. Stand there. Yeah. 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 Listen. Listen to me. Everybody look at me. Please. The word of God is not a lie. God cannot be joking with you. Anytime you take your Bible, I told God, my life and this ministry will be a demonstration of the book of Acts. It's the Acts of the Holy Ghost. Sir King Salama, Salama. He's called the Prince of Peace. Hey. Salama. Yeah. Hallelujah. Leave her alone. Be still, stand in one place now. Sir King Salama, your time in this body is over. Your time in this body is over. Now, in the mighty name of Jesus, out of her now. Come out of her. Out of her. Sir King Salama, out. Come out. The fire of the Holy Ghost. He make it his angel spirits and his ministers flames. Leave her now. She's free. Your time is up. This is Koinonia. The mighty name of Jesus. Come out now. Out of her. Yeah, boy. Listen. Listen. The Lord is showing me an arrow coming from outside this country. This is what affected this boy. This thing has tied this gentleman's life. Leave him. Leave him. Come 
back here. Come back here. Now. Sorry, everybody. Come back here. Many of you, listen. Many of you do not know that wickedness is real. You have allowed films to, to, to spoil your mind. If you don't take, I tell you, whatever is stopping, one of the things I will be doing tonight is breaking the curse of marital delay. Oh, the devil, it will answer tonight. Look at, it's already happening. Come out! Come out! This guy has a violent spirit. A violent spirit. The mighty name of Jesus. Every lecker hole you have over this body, I challenge you right now. You will leave him. The fire of God is against you. It's time for you to go out. Out of him. Out. Shall the captives be delivered and the prey be taken from the mighty. But thus saith the Lord. Let her go right now. Thou foul devil. Come out. Come out. So pray take a pariada baladala. Sarkin salama. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Let me tell you what the Lord is showing me about this gentleman. This guy, listen, listen, please. This guy has a very, very colorful destiny. But do you know what I just saw? From his head to his toe. How many of you have read the story of Lazarus? That's what I saw. And he was tied with snakes from his head to his toe. This is what I'm seeing right now. See? Do you know that the challenges many of you are going through is not ordinary? It's because nobody has told you. But tonight there is a God to set you free. This is spirit husband. This is what is stopping this lady from getting married. Out. Come out of her. Out now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your time is over. I'm seeing an army officer. I'm army officer. In the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. Shekataba. Brentoko Prikata. Out of her right now. This is the spirit of lust. Go prosketaliada. Be gone. There is no hiding. I tell you something. See, the mistake the devil made was to allow you come in here tonight. I don't care whether you are wherever. If you came here tonight, if except God lied to us in the Bible, but if he told us the truth, there will be a performance in your life tonight. Sirkin Salama. Come out. Out of her right now. Salama. Salama. Listen. Let me tell you what happens in meetings like this. Some of you, because of this demon spirit, the one to start pushing you to go out or to run away, you, you better stay and let God help you. The devil is a liar tonight. Are you listening to me? Okay, I didn't finish with this guy. Watch what will happen to this brother. He's not looking at me. Oh. He's not looking at me. Just calm down. Stay in one place. I'm not speaking to him. Just don't worry. Stay in one place. You can't go anywhere. You come here. This is a, the head of a snake I'm seeing. Right to his foot. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
the fire of the Holy Ghost sets you free right now from your head to your toe. I lose you. I lose you. He's going to cough out something outside. Take him outside. He's going to go and cough out something. Sarakin Salama 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 Come out of her right now in the name of Jesus. Devil of darkness. Sarakin Salama Salama There's someone that has a problem, a heart problem, heart problem. That was your request, heart, something in your heart. I don't know what it is. The Lord is showing me. Please remember I told you don't waste our time. Please. There's a lot of things we have to do this night. Heart. Something pertaining to your heart. If you are still thinking about it, you are not the person. Please, quickly. Salama, yeah. Salama. Salama, yeah. Hallelujah. Ah, ah. See, there is a lady. Now, don't feel embarrassed at what I'm about to say. You see snakes in your bathroom. Lady's bathroom. Who is that person? Come out. Come out. This has been an issue. You have not shared it with people. Snakes, you are you see it. Who is the person? Please. Salama. Salama. Yeah. You are not the only one, no. You are not the only one. This is the problem. God, God is ready to deliver you. Look, this is a family. Are you listening to me? This is not. This is an apostolic ministry. So there is, we are here, we are a family. When God is mentioning your case, forget about what, what issue of shame. Issue of shame is out of the way. Hallelujah. What's wrong with your heart? Asthma. Asthma. Is asthma really a heart? This one, I'm seeing a heart problem. But I'll pray for you. Be healed right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, I'm going to pray for you people. God is doing something. Come out of her now. Out. Come out of her now, devil of darkness. Your time is up. Just hold my hands. With both of your hands. The fire of God. Will hold it as tight as you can. It cannot stand. It will leave you. Because you are destined for greatness. Once I see it in the spirit, it must go. For light cannot hide in darkness. Aha, I see you now. Out! Go! Go, Kapotoka, Reketaria, Mambroskote, Reketeria Daba, Boseketalia. Out, come out of her. Out of her right now. Sarkin Salama. Look at me. Two things God is doing. Hold my hands. Hold it. Do you believe? You want God to set you free? Sarkin Salama. Look at my eyes. You just look at my eyes. Try to look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Devil of darkness. Go! There is no hiding. For there is a name that is above every other name. What did she come out for? The same thing? Why were you afraid? Don't be afraid, eh? You hear? Hold my hands. Hold my hands, both of you. Look at me. Can you shout Jesus as loud as you can? Go ahead. Jesus. 
son. You are free. Be delivered right now. I set you free. Now. Do you know what is happening to this lady? If I tell you, some of you will not believe. For every shout that she's making is demons that are going. When she's done, she'll be quiet. <laughs> now, leave her. Fire upon you right now. Out of her. This lady has a great destiny. This is a snake. This is what I'm seeing. This is a whole snake. Mighty snake. The Lord is against you. Let her go now. Out! In the name that is above all names. Hold my hands, my dear. Hold my hands. No, I'm not speaking to her. Don't worry. Come, hold my hands. I'm not speaking to her. Don't worry. You people do not understand spiritual things. You are spiritual people here. Come, hold my hands. The demon knows what it means, what I'm saying. Salama, yeah. Salama. Hurry up, please save our time. We, we don't have much time. Salama. Hold my hands. Don't tap it. Hold it. Out now. Salama. Yeah, yeah. Salama. Watch the way this demon will live. Come, see. Listen. You will go on your knees. You will bow to the king of kings and go. Simple. You will go on your knees, bow to the king, and off you go. In Salama, 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 yeah. Listen, this is not jamboree. As I see my father do it, don't go and try it, you will die for nothing. This is not child's play. Hallelujah. Don't you think we're just no? I'm not one of those ministers. I can't come and waste your time. God is too serious. Are you listening to me? Now lift your hand. Many of you do not know. Listen. Please, now is the time to stand both for yourself. If you are a lady here, there is no reason why you should not be lifting your hands. Marriage is a blessing. It's not a curse. As I, I, as I talk, as I talk, because, you see, I, I see a sword of fire leaving my mouth. I want to break certain demonic things. Many of you don't know what is stopping you and your loved ones. For some of you, it's a row in your family. Many people have told you nothing. Just, just hope one day. No, we don't do that nonsense in this place. Now, faith is. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Listen. The moment we shout the name Jesus, some of you listen, you will testify. Whatever is happening to you here will locate all your loved ones around. Listen, the reason is because there are ordinances of darkness.
that are keeping some of you. Your parents took you to places in the name of protection. And that devil will not let you go. The Lord instructed me to do this. Hallelujah. If you are here, or your loved ones, there has been delay. Men come, they go. Or maybe you have a child and you are thinking you will not marry. That devil is a liar this night. Are you listening to me? So don't just stand for yourself alone. Don't say it does not concern me. Don't be foolish. Hallelujah. Are you ready now? You will see the demonstration of the power of the Spirit. Kai, because, see, I'm seeing blood. I'm seeing blood dripping on the ground. Let me tell you what this means. There are covenants and ordinances. This is what the Lord is showing me. But my Bible says, the blood of Jesus speaketh better things. Better things. At the shout of the name Jesus, the demons responsible for any marital delay, God, you said if I speak it, you will do it right now at the count of three it will hit some of you in a mighty way inside and outside lord let nobody be spared one two three break 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 ushers bring them out all shall spring them out. Break, 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 the yoke be broken, the yoke be broken, the yoke, I release you, I release you, I release you, I release you. Every cause of marriage over your family tonight, be free, be free, be free. Don't, don't take at her, don't take at her. Time to get married. Hey, bring them out. Don't wait till you come out. The power of God is setting you free where you are yes 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 ordinances i'm seeing altars on fire altars on fire altars on fire altars on fire i set them if i be a servant of god right now i set every demonic altar on fire It will burn tonight. Hopo to koto, reke to koto pre, so pre to hopo, sheke pre kate, hopo skote, reke te pre, sheke te, altas, altas. I release you. I release your family. I release you inside and outside. I release you, I release you into your marital destiny. The curse is lifted. I release your sisters. I release your brothers. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, I release you. I release you. I release you. Just receive, I release you. I release you. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I got a text from someone. I mean, they brought someone who was sick. Who was that person? I can't remember now. A sick person. Note, they sent, I remember they sent me a text that they would bring the sick person. Please save our time, for God's sake. We're still going to minister to the sick. Hallelujah. Let that lady go free. Now, devil. Let her go free now. Let her go free. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost upon you. Let her go free right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Everybody say, I receive. Yes, it's happening to you. Now, please listen. I want to pray for terminal diseases. Terminal diseases. All kinds of terminal diseases. Please, you brought someone or you came here with a terminal disease. Come out quickly. Terminal, only terminal diseases. Please, let's save time. Can we do that? God is locating people. There are some of you, God, has, God is already. Terminal diseases. Please come out quickly, quickly. Quickly. I beg you, if you can run, run. Save time, please. Please. As you come out here, say, Lord, it comes. I hope you know what terminal diseases are. you because of time. Listen. Can you just hold your hands together? If you can. I'll just minister to you at once, please. If you came here believing God, then know that it will end. Hallelujah. There is an angel standing here. And there is an angel of the Lord standing here. Please listen. When we begin to minister to the sick, if we call a case and you came with the person, please make sure you come. Especially if the person cannot speak English for our mothers. So that we can hurry up, okay? The power of God will come upon some of you. But it really doesn't matter. That devil is going right now the spirit is called the spirit of infirmity hallelujah after a country you will say i am healed when that happens it's like electricity it will pass with power all around this place are you ready now one two three oh, Porto, be free Go, 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 go. Coming out this is go. Go, 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 go. 
Go! By the fire of the Holy Ghost! Go! 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 Come back with testimonies! Come back with the testimony! By the fire of the Holy Ghost! Come back with the testimony! 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 I speak to you, all of you. Come back with a testimony. Come back with a testimony. Hallelujah. Say, I'm healed. Go back to your seats. You can check yourselves. Please make sure you check yourself. Go to the hospital if you need. I know someone with HIV was healed. Anyone who has been, anyone with any CG, see the power of God is, is breaking from inside. Some of you are outside here, you are not receiving. People inside are receiving and they are leaving you. Listen, anyone with any academic issue that Senate has refused to answer, between now and the next 14 days, I command them to answer. Anyone who is at the verge of probation, listen, anyone at the verge of probation, I pick you from where you are and I bring you back as a student in this school. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. Any cause you did not fail, listen, See, believe oh, any cause you did not fail, but you went to the board and you saw F. I change it. I said I change it. I change it. I change it. I change it. Hallelujah. Any man, I don't care who, who is molesting and oppressing people in, every, in any department or any faculty, whether supervisor or whoever, I instruct them to begin to favor you now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now listen carefully. Those inside, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm standing out because... I want those outside to appreciate this meeting. Now, I'm going to pray for you. Some of you, I'm seeing chains on the heads of... We are dealing with academic issues now. Hallelujah. Listen. I want you to lift your hands. Many of you will feel like fire burning your head. If that... Wait. I'm going to count three. When that happens to you... Listen, this one will affect a lot of people. There are some of you that are first-class materials. But because of this wicked thing, you were excellent in secondary school. It's not that you are bad. Let me tell you, those days will be restored. Because, listen, listen, listen. I'm going to pray for you. Hallelujah. When I count three, inside and outside, with all your heart, shout, I receive. For some of you, that will be the last thing you will remember. Something will happen to you that will change your life. Are you ready now? Please, with all faith. One, two, three. Receive it now. Receive it. Take it. I restore you. Take it. 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 Inside. Inside. Take. Receive it inside. Receive it inside. Outside. Receive it. Receive it inside. Take it inside. Take it inside. At the back. Inside. The angel of the Lord is touching people at the back outside here. At the back, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Many of you will go back now and your academics will surprise you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now listen. 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 I want all of you to think about a cause that has been troubling you because I'm about to make you to bow now. Just listen, listen. I'm working as God is. Just, just think of it in your mind just once and bring it under the logic of Christ because I'm about to open. I'm about to tell it to open up for you. Are you ready? It's already happening to this sister. Now listen. Every department, every faculty in Amadubello University, that course that is threatening you right now, when I shall bow, many of you feel as if your head will open up. Are you ready now? In the name of Jesus, bow. 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 In the name of Jesus, bow. Bow. In faculty of medicine, bow. Faculty of engineering, bow. Environmental design, bow. Education, bow. Social sciences, bow. Sciences, bow. All the faculties in Congo, bow. Every other faculty, bow. Anyone with a missing script, problem of missing script, I stand tonight under this unction and I command wherever your paper is, where, except you didn't write that exam, wherever your paper is, just as the donkey of Kish was found, I command that paper to be found now. Hallelujah. For all those whose assessments have been bad, listen, for this exam, for all those whose assessments have been bad, have been, uh, are bad, in the name of Jesus, I release makeup test, makeup assignment in the name of Jesus. May the Lord touch the hearts of the lecturers, no matter how hard they are. Hallelujah. All of you shout, I will excel. <laughs> Say it one more time, I will excel. <laughs> Say, excellence is my portion. <laughs> Say, I refuse failure. <laughs> Say, I refuse failure. <laughs> I take you from pass, from third class, I take you into some of you are, are trusting. Let me tell you, any class you need to step up, I step you up right now. Yeah. I know some of you are doubting. Do not doubt the creative power of God's word. It created the heavens and earth. I said I stepped you up, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For all those whether you or your loved ones, they've been writing jam after jam, wayek after wayek. You are looking for papers, it has refused to come. If God be God, if there is a God in this place, listen, those of you who are about to, whether jam, whether DE, you have papers that you need to make up. I stand as a servant of God. I give you the paper you are looking for. Those writing jam, I prophesy, write your last jam in the name of Jesus. Those writing whether wayek or whatever to make up. And there are some of you who are about graduating, but the papers you have are causing trouble. And right now you already have a problem at the Senate. Mercy, 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 you must graduate. You must graduate. Let something be done in your life that has not been done in this school. God is visiting people. Thank you, Jesus. 
God is opening people's files, I tell you. God is visiting people. Don't stand there doubting. God will bless others and leave you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything called mental blockage or exam fever, all this nonsense that comes on people, you will read and even do tutorials for others. In the name of Jesus. That spirit that makes you to forget things in the exam hall, that you will only remember after you finish right, right now. I curse that spirit in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You cannot read like a slave. I forbid you from reading like a slave. In the mighty name of Jesus. God is visiting people in a mighty way this night. God is visiting people in a mighty way. Hallelujah. In your academics, I don't care how bad it has been. I don't care what has happened from today. Step into that, that dream you saw that your, your results has never looked like it. You have been seeing it. Enter the reality of it. Many of you have dreams. You see four points, but you write exam and see one point. I curse that devil in the name of Jesus. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I tell you, God is visiting people. Hallelujah. Now, please, everybody who is sick, you came here with any kind of disease. I'm about to rebuke it right now, please. We don't have time. Our time is fast spent. But God is going to visit inside. Are you still with me? Are you still with me inside? Now, those outside here, I want, I want to pray. Everybody lay your hands anywhere it's hurting. If it's a part of your body, you cannot lay your hands on, lay your, hands on your chest. Whether fibroids, whether growths, whether cancer, whether blindness, whether deafness, whether lameness, whatever it is, I don't care. If it followed you here, it made a mistake because it's going to leave you right now. Are you listening to me? Some of you, what you call sickness is actually oppression. Because I see that there are many ladies with all kinds of sicknesses. People think you are careless, you are not. That devil will leave you. Hallelujah. Some of you have HIV. It's not like you slept around. You too, you don't know how it came. Some of you have all kinds of cancerous growth. There are people they told you you, you cannot. I, I, after I finish this, I'm going to specially pray for barren people. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, listen. All of you inside, lift your hands. Lift your hands for that healing. I'm going to count three and the power of God will begin to come on sick people. Just those inside. Those inside. Hallelujah. The angels of God are moving inside. I see them. At the count of three inside, I tell you many sicknesses will disappear right now. The moment I count three, just take that hand and lay it where it's hurting and start receiving your miracle. Are you ready? One, two, three. Receive right now. Take it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now lay your hands there. Receive your healing right now. Receive your healing right now. Many of you are feeling like electricity. It's the healing anointing of the Holy Spirit. It's going through you. Begin to do what you couldn't do before. Those outside now, lay your hands there. Are you ready to receive? That devil will not follow you. Now in the name of Jesus, those outside here, receive. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Growth disappear. Terminal diseases go. Asthma go. Asthma, go. Every deaf ear be open now. Every blind eyes be open. If your hair and one leg is shorter than the other, let the other one grow out now to equal sizes. In the name of Jesus. Every lady problem, every woman problem, man de kagokoto. 
irregular menstruation ends now. 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 The fire of God is burning. I tell you, the fire of God is burning. Every lump in the breast disappears now. Disappears now. Disappears now. Every growth in any part of your body, every growth, I cause that growth to its root right now in the name of Jesus. I cause that growth to its root right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Any pain in any area of your body, I rebuke it. Any trace of mental disorder, whether for you or for your loved ones, wherever they are, and if you are here, let the power of God touch you now. Let the fire of God touch you now. Let the fire of God touch you now. Let them go. Let them go. Out. 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 Every kind of mental problem, whether it has manifested or not, out, 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 out. Go, go. Every curse, every covenant. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, any woman here, or your sister, or you, who has been barren, please connect. Now is the time. We want to release miracle children right now. I don't care whether they have been barren for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. The Bible says, and God opened the womb of Anna. Listen, I want you to stand. You are a lady here, you lived a promiscuous life. And then you found out that, okay, some things happened. Maybe you lost your womb or something. God is about to give you a new one right now. I don't care what the problem is. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to curse barrenness and impotency. Low sperm count. All this demonic infertility, whatever. I, I don't care. If it has a name, it's going to answer this night. Are you ready? Everybody inside, make sure you are with me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Whether for you or for your loved ones, right now, my father in the name that is above all names. Lift your hands. I pray. There are some of you, listen. Some of you do not know that there are already projections of barrenness on you. It's just that you have not married yet. So don't say until you are married. The devil is wicked. God brought you to set you free. You'll be surprised. Hallelujah. Inside and outside, you're going to shout Jesus. And God is going to visit some people. There are some of you, God will visit you not for you, but on behalf of other family members. And I tell you, you will see people take in. Are you listening to me? Do you believe this? At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus and you'll see what will happen. Are you ready? Thank you, Holy Ghost. At the count of three, let your power move across inside and outside. Are you ready? This will happen to many people because there is the curse of barrenness. And standing for anybody at the count of three, shout it with all your heart. Are you ready? One, two, three. Take it, take it, take it. Take it. Supokoto. Rekete keriata. Barrenness. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. Inside. Inside. Fire. Fire is falling inside. Outside. Fire is falling. The curse of barrenness. Tokoto peketa. For your loved ones. Every barren woman. Receive children. Receive children. Receive children. Any impotency. Whatever it is, low sperm count, infertility, whatever it is in the name of Jesus, I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Please stay with me. Hallelujah. I want to pray and prophesy 
we want to talk on the issue of finances right now. Everybody stand up and take this very seriously. We apologize for the lightning. I believe that maybe some hitches here and there. We'll soon round off. Hallelujah. While this is happening, please let's have all the prayer requests outside here. Look at me. See, listen, look up. The secret of financial blessing is in your giving life. Are you listening to me? I don't care what you are doing. The secret, if you are not a giver, whatever you are seeing now is only a deceit. It won't last. Are you listening to me? I want to minister to you. How many of you know that God is not glorified in anybody's poverty? How many of you are tired of the situation of some of your family members? You know, you know what? Some of your parents, one job here, two months, they've driven them away. This is a curse. The problem is that pastors like sugar coating things. They just say, oh, it's well. There is a difference between faith and foolishness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to challenge you. Everybody, please hold a seat. Bring out a seat. You know us in this place. If you don't believe, don't bring it out. I want to break the curse of poverty. Don't you think, please, I, I, if you have something, share with your neighbor. Please, please, please. Bring out a seat. Don't mumble and grumble. Just keep your seat back, please. We are a blessed people. We are a blessed people. Look at me. Look at me, sister. Look at me. Tell her to look at me. Look at me. Just tell her to look at me. Don't worry. Leave her. Look at me. Come out of her, devil of darkness. Ah, leave you alone. Praise God. See, while I was praying for this people, I saw this. Please listen. I saw a particular family. This is a revelation that the Lord showed me. And I saw them around the river. Hallelujah. Around the river with 500 naira. I don't know. I, I'm not going to mention them so that you don't think maybe I'm talking about a church or a ministry. So don't do that. But I saw some people, seeming men of God or whatever, around that they were trying to do something about financial prosperity. You see that? They killed chicken. They killed one other animal. I think goat or something. And they were invoking things on the person. And the Lord said, save this family. I saw it in the vision that the Lord showed me. There is nothing we will do here that God did not instruct. Hallelujah. Please, if you do not have a revelation of this, keep your money. You won't go to hell. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bring out something and connect it. I want to pray for you. You will lift it up. Hallelujah. Inside and outside, just lift it up. Kai, people are oppressed. Ah, people are oppressed. Listen, just lift it. Many of you, the fire will fall on you and your sacrifice. It will fall on you. See, it, it's poverty I want to attack. It's a spirit. Don't be mistaken about it. It's already happening to people. Everybody lift it. Please, make sure there is a seed. It will be your contact. Clash the symbol for me, please. At the clash of the symbol. Are you ready now? My father, I pray, it's your desire to prosper us. People have suffered. Families have suffered. Right now, spirit of poverty, go, go, go. Keep the offering up, go. Go, 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 go. For your family, I born that spirit of poverty. It's a cause. Leave God's people. Poverty causes laziness. Poverty causes lack of failure. Lift your seed. It's your sacrifice. My God and my King. If God be God. I pray poverty be broken in the name of Jesus. Be broken.
my people made a covenant with me by sacrifice. I command doors of uncommon, unusual, inexplicable and shall prosperity. Let it be open now for you and for your family. That joblessness ends now. Mm, God is visiting families. God is visiting families. Any contract that has been revoked right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, I return it back to your loved ones. The curse of poverty be broken. Don't say I'm a student. Become rich in the name of Jesus. Become rich, blessed, wealthy. I program your spirit as surely as the Lord lives. God is visiting people. Twenty-one angels standing in this place. I don't know what I'm seeing. I'm seeing it, the whole of this place. The whole of this place. Lift your hands because God is about to visit you. Some of you, it's not just financial issues. God will join everything and visit you. As soon as I shout, receive it. Right from here, down to this row. This is what God is showing me. The power of God will come in a strong way. Lift your hands, all of you. In the name of Jesus, at the count of two, just two, the wind will blow. One, two, let it blow right now. Take it. 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 Don't wait till you fall. This has nothing to do with falling. It has nothing to do with falling. Receive by faith. Hallelujah. The Lord is visiting people. I don't know what the case is, but when I touch you, just know God is visiting you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The angels of the Lord are pointing people to me. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Aha. Now, out of her. Come out. Come out of her. Shekotopa, your time is up. You are a spirit. Out, out now. Pain, go. Come out. Supokotopekata lekata. Don't break tons kebanda kriata. Lord, visit them. Ushers, help me. Visit them. Please help them. Help them, ushers, so that they don't fall down one another. Visit them. Visit them. Zidaba. God is visiting your mother right from the States. Oh, no, in UK. God is visiting her right now. Hallelujah. Madam, God is about to locate you. Stand up, please. Stand up. Your time of breakthrough has come. Come and stand here, please. I don't know you, but look at me. Three things the Lord is going to do for you. Number one, God is going to change your financial story in a way that will surprise you. Number two, who is sick? Somebody is seriously sick in your family. It's your husband. I have to it's your husband. Because this is what I'm seeing. This is what is sugar. Sugar. Yes, yes. Sugar. What is sugar? I'm hearing sugar. Do, do I know him? Have I met your husband? I'm hearing sugar. The Holy Spirit is telling me sugar. Diabetes. Is that correct? I'm, I'm BP. BP. I'm BP. Look at me. The third thing God is going to do. I, 
Are you building? Are you building? Madam, look at me. Are you? Yes. The Lord is saying that building will be completed. These three things. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Because you have lifted this seed. Many of you, see. Father, visit her right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Visit families by the power of the Holy Ghost. Visit families. In the name of Jesus. See, I tell you, I'm not going to touch everybody. But if I do touch you, just know that God has visited you. It doesn't matter what the situation is. It will bow to the name of Jesus Christ. Bring this sister for me, this one. Yes, come. Did I lay hands on you? It's time for God to visit you. Are you listening to me? Take it. It's over. Whatever it is, it's over. Right now. This fair lady, come, please. I don't know what you did. Come. Don't see. You people should not be angry at God. God, it, I must not touch you. Do you understand? You can see that we don't have all of the time. Eh? Look at me. I'm going to end a lot of things in your life. Seven things in total. One by one, God is going to show you. Five of them. You wrote, you wrote seven prayer points. Yes, sir. How many prayer points? Did you? Oh, seven. The Lord says seven things is visiting you and is bringing all. Was I there when you wrote it? Seven things you wrote. Seven things the Lord is visiting them. Lord, that is it. It ends right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Seven things the Lord is visiting you. Somebody wrote 13 prayer points. 13. 13, 13, you wrote 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to 13. Who is that? Come, you are the one, come. Was I there when you were writing it? 13 prayer points. 13 prayer points. What did you write about your father? My family, peace in my family. Peace in your family, there is fight. Was I there when you wrote it? What did you write about the issue of money? Last week when I went home, my sister was complaining that there is because I'm seeing the Lord is showing me your prayer points. That's why I'm reading it to you. Were, was I there? There's no money. You went home. Even transport to come back. Oh no, somebody, somebody gave me a lift. Is, I, I, God said I should do to prove to you that this is not just guesswork. My God, in the name of Jesus, locate this lady. Your situation ends once and for all. Regina, 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 Regina. Who is Regina? Regina. No, Regina, don't miss your miracle. You are Regina? You? No, this Regina is here. Oh. Your name is Regina. Where's your mother? I don't know. What's wrong with her? I don't know. Pray for your mother. Oh. Huh? Because this is an attack I'm seeing on her. Huh? This is an attack I'm seeing on her. Be careful. Don't let any lecturer talk stories and ask you to come and visit him in the night. Does it make sense to you? Does it make sense to you? Believe me. Huh? And then get into God with all your heart. Are you listening to me? I want to pray for you. This like a Jessica Christian attitude. Become a genuine Christian right now. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Grace to pray. Grace. Taiwo. God is visiting your mother. Just look at me. God is visiting your mother. Lord, visit her in the name of Jesus Christ. Right from here, just as a point of contact, God is touching her in Lagos. Visit her in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Visit her. This, this girl, eh? Bring this lady crying. Lord, end this captivity in the name of Jesus. This lady's family do a lot of diabolic things. Are you listening to me? And they have put they have put things in this girl as a medium. This girl you are seeing, she's not the person you are seeing standing here. Hmm? This girl is very old. She's not as young as you are seeing. As in, I mean in the spirit realm. I'm seeing somebody that is up to 800 years old. Hallelujah. 
Are you seeing? Look at, look at this. Bring her. This is what is wrong. They, they invoke spirits of ancestors into this girl. Come and stand here. Because they did it in such a way. Listen, they did it in such a way. And this is the invocation that no matter how much you are a man of God, you will not see it. This is what they do. Look at, I've seen it. I'm seeing it in the spirit. Look at, this is why this cry is happening. They, they programmed it. I don't know how it is. Many men of God have attended to this lady. They didn't see it. I don't know why. Because as I'm standing now, I'm seeing a tree. This is a tree I'm seeing, a very tall tree. Keep quiet. This lady, you see, she doesn't even know if this lady gets angry, she can beat even five guys put together. Are you listening to me? She, 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 she will, I mean, beat you and put you on the ground that you will cry. Even her, right from a small age, she has been seeing this strange power. This is not normal. I need to rebuke that. Some of you are like that. You just think it's your family. You beat all your classmates in nursery school. Beat all your classmates in. You are happy about it. I have to set this girl free. I'm seeing rings on her legs, rings on her hands, huh? ring on her eyes, even on her eyes here. Yeah. What kind of nonsense is this rubbish thing? Hmm? Keep quiet, noisy spirit. You will go out now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hmm? Keep quiet. Keep quiet. Huh? Two of us will be talking. You are going to leave. There is a level access that is given to you. But the Bible says the captives of the mighty shall be delivered. And listen, leave her. Please leave her. Don't hold her. Look at me. Listen. Behave yourself right now. I'm going to rebuke this. Some, it will create a ripple effect on all our family members because they mentioned their names as they were killing chicken. This is what I'm seeing. One by one, they will mention their names and kill chicken. Leave her, leave her, leave her, leave her. Come back. Just leave her. She will come back by herself. This thing is more than 800 years. This is what I'm telling you. Am I wasting your time? Am I wasting your time? Leave her, leave her. When she's done, she'll come and stand here. These are demonic things. Don't be distracted by all this drama. Let's concentrate on what God is doing, please. Mama, come. Come and stand here. Your time of visitation has come. I don't know what you came here for. Eh? Your time of what did you come here for? You are barren. Is that? Yes, sir. You are barren. How many years? Three years. She's seen one and three. Mm -hmm. Thirteen years. Thirteen years. You have been barren. Your 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 situation has come to an end. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lay your hands on your stomach. What did the doctors tell you is in your stomach? Nothing. They will do scan, nothing. But you are feeling movement in your body. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the night when you are sleeping, it will be as if a man wants to sleep with you. Yes, sir. A man comes to sleep. Yes, and it has even affected your relationship. Yes, sir. Eh? You don't even have affection for him. Yes, yes. Do you know me? No, sir. Have you ever seen me? Your time of freedom has come this night. Because this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a stone, a stone inside your stomach. You used to have pain when you sleep. Sharp pain. This is a stone I'm seeing. Hmm? This thing is a demonic thing. Lay your hands. I open this womb right now. Let the womb take in by the power of... Take it right now. 
All right, it's time for you to go. Now, in the name of Jesus, I challenge you, come and stand here. There's no time. See, demons can distract. If you waste time on them, they are going to distract you. Are you listening to me? All these things are distractions. Learn this. This is not just a place to receive. It's a place to learn. Many people focus. I'm not against all of but it's not necessary. We don't have all of this time. Are you listening to me? Come and stand here. Quickly come and stand here. It was finance, right? Okay. Let God solve somebody's problem right now. Listen. I release you into financial blessings. 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 Hallelujah. Pastor Jakes is going to come. Bishop Stan is going to come. They are going to speak prophecies into you. Hallelujah. I wish we had time. But as they speak, please receive. Hallelujah. They will speak and while I go up there. When they are done, we'll come and pray on your request. Can you wait a few more minutes? Can you wait a few minutes? Pastor Jackson. Okay, please, ushers, just cast your offering. Cast your offering quickly. Ushers, all over. If there are no ushers, just be patient. Inside and outside. Please make sure you drop your money to only ushers. Hallelujah. Please lift up your hands. There's no time. Joining hands with Bishop and as we pray, whatever you desire, okay? Whatever giftings you've been trusting God to unlock in your life, whatever dimension of God you've been trusting God to push you into, as we pray corporately, the presence of God and the oil of God will be poured upon you in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you in Jesus' name. I give you praise in the name of Jesus, even as you have declared through your servant. Lord, as we cast this seed, may it be an end to poverty and financial hardship in the name of Jesus. You cause doors to be opened for every family represented here in Jesus' name. We stand in agreement and rebuke devourer in the name of Jesus. Devourers in form of sickness, in form of accident, we rebuke you in Jesus' name. We set everyone free. Enter into your financial liberty in the name of Jesus. Marital liberty in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me invite the ministers as we pray on the request. If you've not written your request, please write it here quickly. I want to, after this, I'm going to be inviting Uneko and his wife who are going to be dedicating and praying for their child. Hallelujah. And any other woman with child here, you're going to come out with your child. You're going to pray and speak protection after I do that very quickly. Hallelujah. Please. Very quickly. Stretch your hands while you are seated. You don't need to stand up. Stretch your hands as we pray on this request. Go ahead and pray. Father, we pray that you visit your people. Visit your people, oh God. Visit your people. Visit your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, visit families. In the name of Jesus. Grant every spiritual blessing that your people are asking for. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We pray that every prayer point here, Lord, is answered in the name of Jesus. We release the angels of God to bring answers and solutions to needs in the name of Jesus. Let breakthroughs come, academic blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. 
we pray for businesses. We ask that prayer points here about businesses, that the Lord will open up doors in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask for healing. We release the healing of God upon your lives in the name of Jesus Christ. We bring salvation into your family. The Lord visits your family in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord blesses you with peace joy in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. Refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every closed gate is open in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every dark cloud is rolled away in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We celebrate you in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Please quickly, quickly, quickly. All the children, quickly, quickly. Please save time. We just have about five minutes or so and we're out of. Celebrate them as they come if you know God will give you children. Please come and line up here quickly, quickly. Great are you, Lord. Greatly to be praised. All the earth will sing. Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, let me pray. Please, Uneku, come up with your wives. How many of you remember them? Worship team. Come on, celebrate your own. Technical, celebrate your own too. See, they're all seated together. Is that where they met? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody stretch your hands towards them. This baby is a miracle baby. I tell you. I was there in the hospital. I didn't even know the baby was on the bed. I said, where is the baby? Hallelujah. Stretch your hands and pray. Rebuke the hand of Satan. Do it as though you are praying for your own child. Rebuke the hands of Satan. This baby is blessed. Growing normally. Daddy and mommy are healthy. In the name of Jesus. We dedicate this child in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. This child will grow in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. We command this child to be an ambassador. Amen. We program his destiny to glorify Christ alone. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for peace in this house. This will only be the first child and not the only child. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Jakes and Bishop Stan, can I invite you just to come and lay hands on these children? Hallelujah. As we lay hands, all three of us will lay hands. You just lay hands. I'll come back and lay hands on them. As we lay hands on the children, we rebuke the hands of Satan. We rebuke the hands of Satan. No, let me lay hands on them before they go. We are, we are doing it, all of us, please. Very quickly. These are instructions that God is giving. We are not just doing these things carelessly. Any child, any one child that has anything that is not of God, we cancel it right now. We cancel it right now. Eh? name of the Lord Jesus, may the Lord visit this child. Let his hearing be perfected in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. See how wicked Satan can be. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, these children are blessed. Where is he? Bring him. The boy ran away because this boy wants to kill himself. It's the spirit that wants to kill him. Where is he? Come on, we, I tell him to stand, but he went. You see what I told you, spirit? He ran away to where? Wherever he is right now, in the name that is above all names, may the Lord visit him. Amen. You will go back and you will come and testify. Hmm? I'm seeing the fire of God on him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord visits him. You are standing on his behalf. In Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Uh -uh. Come out of this girl devil of darkness. May the Lord bless you. Madam, God is really visiting your family. May the Lord... Ah, you came out for yourself? 
up for yourself. And the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I prophesy upon your life. Please stand up, everybody. The rounding up now. Every closed door in the name that is above all names, I open it right now. Every door of failure and disappointment in the mighty name of Jesus, let that door be open now. I pray right now. Any voice that is speaking against you and your destiny, I command those voices to be silenced right now. Whatever is stopping your spiritual development, whatever is stopping your passion for God, one leg in, one leg out, I pray. I release encounters to your life. Encounters with angels. Encounters of heaven. Visions and revelations. Dramatic encounters with Jesus Christ. I pray for the spirit of prayer. May it come upon you in a mighty way. Who is this? Oh, see the boy is back. Come. Look at me. How are you? The Lord will set you free. Eh? You love Jesus. Look at me, look at me. You love Jesus. Do you like what happens to your life? Huh? Are you tired of it? Look at me. Are you tired of it? Huh? You want to be free from it? Huh? Madam, it's not this boy that is doing this to you. Are you listening to me? This is a suicidal spirit. Huh? This is demonic. Because this boy is destined to be great. Are you seeing it? And this is why the devil wants to destroy him. Hmm? Look at me, my brother. Why did you go away? doesn't even know why he left. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that devil of darkness, your time in this boy's body is over. The fire of the Holy Ghost against you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm praying for you right now. Who is Bulus? It's his uncle. Bulus is his uncle. Do, you, do I know Bulus? Where is he? wickedness of men will not catch up with this boy. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, my God and my King, I pray for a dramatic visitation. Look at me. Look at me. Go to church. Join a fellowship. Huh? These bad guys that are around you, they will destroy you. I cancel your appetite for them. They are, they, are trying to, they are trying to introduce you into youth and all of this nonsense. You will not have appetite for any of these things. Hmm? You will become an obedient and a respectful child. This hardened heart this night has been replaced with the heart of stone. Salvation comes to this family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Rehila. Who is Rehila? Do you know anybody called Rehila? What is the name? Well, I'm hearing the name Rehila. This is your daughter? Come. How are you, my brother? Hold my hands. See a mystery. I'm going to be praying for you. But is that your sister that is going? Oh, hold on. Don't tell me. I don't want you to tell me. Hmm? Don't tell me. Don't worry. That's your sister there. I'm seeing light leaving you and is entering. I'm going to pray for you, but the prayer is going to affect her. Hold my hands. I set you free right now. I set you free right now. Lose, lose her from that chain. Be loose right now. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit.
There is deliverance going on in your family right now. I don't know why this is happening, but God is bringing you. Brother, look at me. Please be a gentleman, okay? Be a gentleman. Love God. Be serious with your life. You are a healer. Thank you so much. Let me pray for you. The, the Lord is not giving me anything exactly. What do you want the Lord to do for you? Oh, you don't know. I'll just pray generally for you, okay? Exactly. Lay your hands on your head. Praise the Lord. I command favor to your life. I command favor. Favor. Favor is one blessing that the Lord has given us here. I release it into your life right now. Whatever has been a challenge for you, may God speak it. Listen, when God speaks over your situation, that's all it ends. If you are here, I didn't call your case. But you came with an expectation right now in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. May the Lord visit you at that point of your need. Every habit here that is not of God, masturbation, pornography, all of these devilish things that are destroying people, I cast it out of your life forever. I cast it out of your life forever. It will not return again. I cast it out. I cast it out of your life every form of immorality that stops you from entering the dimension God wants to take you. I release grace upon you to walk in genuine holiness and purity. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for your parents and your loved ones. As God visits you here, may he visit them. As God visits you here, may he visit them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as we step into the seventh month, may it be a time of perfection for you. May it be a time of perfection for you. May it be a time of perfection for you. What you have not accomplished from January to June, accomplish it in July. I command promotion. I command promotion. All of you in ministry, I pray that you will see a greater anointing in your ministries. I release greater fire in your fellowships, in your churches, in your ministries. Let devils be casted out. Let the sick be healed. Let sinners be saved in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command increase and expansion for ministries here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All of you planning for marriage, I command whatever resource you need, I release it for you. Even if the man has not come, I bring him into your life. Even if the woman has not come, I bring her into your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, inside and outside, this is an opportunity for those who have never given their hearts to the Lord. Please stand up. Everybody keep standing, please. Hallelujah. The greatest miracle that can happen in this place is that you are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. You have seen the miracles and all of these things. But there are many of us that need to make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And right now, as we begin to clap, I'll count one to five. Praise God. Inside and outside, please give them space. Inside and outside, I want you to come before the Lord here. You've never given your heart to the Lord or you made a decision for Jesus once. You made a decision for Jesus once, but you found yourself derailing. Please come out and stand here in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Please, leave your seat and come out. Appreciate them. They are coming. God bless you. Please rush, rush, run, run, run. Don't be afraid. God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. Don't be ashamed inside and outside. God bless you as you come. They are coming. Koinonia, celebrate them. Outside, make sure you don't stay back. Don't let any devil rob you of the greatest blessing. Keep coming. Keep coming. Young and old, keep coming.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep coming. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, when I do this, Selena and my sister and their roommates, please come and stand. I'll pray for you. Hallelujah. All of you. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands, those of you in front. Thank you so much for coming. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I love you. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I'm born again. I'm saved. Jesus is Lord of my life. I denounce sin and Satan from today. The Holy Spirit lives in me. I have eternal life and the gift of righteousness. And I will reign in this life. And I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that I will never be the same again. My life is transformed. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.